task one what happening here guys guys now let me see the number of items because you we want to see the what are how many items are available inside this items let me see this one okay let me add items okay, you can see that it's giving one support let me give you task one is giving two task three is giving three task four is giving four task five is giving five but you can see that we have item it is displaying this way okay got it but in this case we are just displaying the length means length you know that array length list of length or count whatever you are saying that i want to display how many items is available inside these items now you can see that i can able to see i have five items is there you can log also you know that it's displaying five items because array start from zero index zero to four item total length is five right now we already get the data now this data need to be display here is a form of list got it now we pass the data now this data is available in this component and this data we are going to display inside this component okay inside this component now now guys we have a list of data right means items is a is a array right it's an array of data now the things is here like how because to display the data we must have to put a loop right suppose example in this case suppose you want to display this item what will do you will do like um, for okay let i equal to 0 i is less than items dot length okay then i plus plus right this is the code you should have to write and again then what will do you will suppose access the this dot sorry you will access this dot items of i then whatever you want to do you want suppose you want to print the task you have printed created on it's up to you okay this is the one way to go use the loop you use the like normal iteration another way you all people know that the array also contain the for each loop suppose i want to do the for each then what will I type uh, suppose for each sorry for uh, in javascript for is like this way suppose uh, let um obj of uh, items this is also a for each loop means each and every items for each and every suppose this is the same as our for each loop okay for each loop you are writing this way right in programming you are writing for each loop this way right for each suppose um, uh, item in um, items just example this is the things you are writing this way right same syntax is here also for let let means you know that let is used to define a variable let object of this one means it's going to say that it's going to loop one by one by one and assign the object assign the one object to an object to this object variable this is the another way to write the for loop means this is previous one is a for loop using the index this one is the for loop using the our for each it's each one for each of of what you understand of query is used to assign one 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 value to this object guys this is the things we did it but the, the problem is here this is our code right this is our code in this code to loop the data there is no matter because data need to be displayed in this component right because data we need to display only this list component not inside this this means we have to display inside the html not in the ts because ts is a code file list is our suppose list is our html file means data we have to display here only we have to display all the item whatever we have added right now means in this html we have to add a loop here right we have to add a loop here now guys to add a loop inside this html now in this case we have to learn the new concept that is called directives directive we have to learn using the directive only we can able to loop the data we can able to conditional the data we can manipulate the html understand guys what is the meaning of a directive understand directive one because this is the first thing directive okay directive 
Directive in guys, this will use to manipulate HTML or DOM. Guys, HTML DOM, I will explain this DOM in later. That is not, we are not going to spend much more time on now. Means, just imagine, this is our page, right? Page means, it's almost, it's HTML control, right? means it's a text box it's a button it's a div etc etc whatever you can say that but finally it's html right all are html you can see all are html only now to manipulate means to change or modify the html data inside our angular application that time we are using the directive okay we are using the directive now we'll go and understand how to implement this directive inside our application guys we can have there is a two different kind of directives there okay now we will go to use the attribute directive another one is structural directive structural directive i'll explain now attribute directive means we can define our own directive that is that part we are not going to focus now but let's go and use the directive part how to use the structural directive inside our application what is structural directives Structural directive means if you're going to change the structure of the data or structure of the H content, structure of the HTML, then we are going to tell that it's a structural directive. What is a structure? Let me tell you what is structure. Now just imagine this is a uh, suppose a div. Okay. And based on some condition, I don't want to print this data. Suppose loading just example loading suppose this loading is only display when i am doing some long task right after my task completed i need to hide this hide this i need to don't display this loading can you understand that way suppose you are retrieving data from a api and suppose api taking some time in between this time you want to display a load, loader symbol okay now after data receive receive from this api you need to hide this loader guys now what happening in this case you are manipulating this div means when my condition is there what you going to write suppose if uh, variable suppose loading then equal to equal to true then display this one right else display other things else and do other things Okay, same code you write right suppose in the normal programming suppose i will show that please display a variable loader or if you don't there is no loading display another things then what are you going to write right if a variable loading equal to equal to true display loading else display other things same way you're going to write right now what you're doing you're manipulating this element right based on some condition you are showing or hiding the you are visible you are going to display or not display the control right but guys, this thing is possible in the place of this code because in, in this place code we are know that we have if and else condition going to add but this if and else condition is not available in html because you all people know that html doesn't contain any dynamic concept it's just a static data binding right now but in our condition we have to make this data as a dynamic binding right now how we can go and bind the data as a dynamic means whatever things we are doing in this coding means normal javascript the same thing also we can go and use it here now let's see how we can do that okay now guys now first of first of things what is the first things you know this is the html contact uh, you know or, or this is the html comment right now first thing is okay display no task found when there are there are no items guys what i'm saying when suppose if i go and save this one when there is no items now you know that after loading it's a blank one when there are no items that are what will, what you will do we have to display no items or no task found okay now what will do that how you can know that no task is there means when this array length when this items length is equal to equal to zero that time we know that this is this is not contain 
any items right how you know that this uh, array is empty or not then in this case you write this dot length this dot items dot length equal to equal to zero oh, sorry equal to equal to zero now you know that if it's equal to equal to zero means it's a blank one right now in this case i have to check suppose let me add a, um, a div here okay now here i'll type uh, suppose no task found just example and i will mark as inside the strong tag strong tag you all know that strong tag is used for make a bold now guys after doing this one if i go now it's going no task found but after adding the task it should be hide right but this no task found should be add some condition how to add a condition i have to check here if the data items length equal to equal to zero then only i have to display this note as found guys this thing you know that in this code we are doing this way if then you'll do the things right now how we can add this if condition inside this html guys for that angular is giving a directive that is called ng if understand this is ng if asterisk ng if ng if means you already know that ng stands for angular if is if condition ng if is saying that if what happening if if you know that if is going to true boolean true or false if the expression is true then this block is going to execute if expression is false this block is not going to execute means if i say that 19 number line if this equal to equal to zero if it true then i will execute this line right this will success or it will true path else it's a false path right but here in this case we have only the if part there is no else part in the in case of our uh, angular there is only one case that is called ng if and you will say why there is no else part guys the reverse of if is else right means if I say this is the item equal to equal to, equal to zero means it's if what else means what will happen it will, else will happen means if there is no length is not equal to zero then else what I can say other way also if this dot items dot length not equal to zero guys this is the same also also if else else right whatever else I'm writing this part this part what I'm writing this also going to justify the same thing right because the reverse of if is else right but if i write this code as a if it's true part if i going to write this part a reverse way means the negative way it's else part due to that in this application application means in our uh, in our in our angular there is no else part whatever expression you want to write the reverse of that expression is a false due to that there is no else part okay now now what we're going to check guys we are going to check the item dot length equal to equal to zero or not in this case i'll write items dot length equal to equal to zero what i'm checking here i'm saying that ng if guys understand ng if where i applied ng if in this div now ng if is a structural directive okay now you can the boolean expression to evaluate as the condition for showing template means they are saying that this is the template I mean this is a tag in this tag i am saying that this is only going to render when there is a length equal to equal to zero understand this part to add a condition inside the html we are going to use asterisk ng if remember this one okay now i add the uh, add the co comment here ng if is used to display the display the html based on the based on the condition okay got it now now see that now guys let's go to our element explorer it is an element explorer let me go to element now if i click it here select element click it here and go to here we'll find that this is our content div right now now displaying now let me go and add a task one now once i click on add this see this part when you click on add 
you can see that that is hide that is no longer there okay that is happening dynamically how this is happening that is happening the help of ng if means ng if is a programmatical if of javascript the same thing we are using inside our application okay now you got it asterisk ng if ng if this is the expression the expression is always known that it's a boolean value it's going to return true or false it's up to you how are going to use it right now now second thing is if there is no if there is length is greater than zero then what i'll do i'll go and display the list of items okay i'll go and display list of items then as i told as I told, like items dot length equal to equal to zero means it's a one condition. The second condition is second condition is display the list of items. Okay, display the list of items if length is if items length is greater than zero. Okay, guys greater than zero means i'll write this code here div ng if items dot length not equal to zero got it not equal to zero this is also the true right the negative the reverse of a e false is, is a false right now this is a false part means the item is not length zero now inside that what i'll do i'll loop the data what i do to the loop the data i loop these items right after loop the items, I have to print all the data here. Now let's go and print the data. Then we'll discuss about other stuff. Now, suppose I want to print the data. Let me do one thing. I'll add another div and loop it. Guys, loop means I have to use the for loop. For loop, as I told, we have to use the for each loop. Now here, what I'll do, there is a inbuilt uh, like attribute is available, uh, directive is available in um, in angular which is used use for the for loop what will do i, I write ng for guys right, you can see it's saying ng for ng if you got it is called ng for now ng for means it's the same as a for loop but for loop means what is the for loop this for loop is a for each loop okay ng for is used to loop the data okay the guys this ng4 is same as for let obj of items i told a uh, little bit earlier i told this, this one right this is the for each loop in javascript i am saying that i'll go and iterate iterate means i'll go and loop each items of items and store inside the item you can give any variable it's just variable declaration of this item of you know that if related it's called in each and every item inside these items you want to store inside the loop now if i have 10 items it will go to loop for 10 10 times right got it now now inside this i want to display the task now what i'll do i'll write the simple right you know that curly bracket is used to bind in the data now i'll bind item what is item item is an instance of this loop then task because task why task because if you know that this is the instance of i to do right this this item is the instance of i to do i to do contain the attribute called task to access the attribute inside the javascript we are using dot operator okay dot operator dot operator is used to to access the attribute or property of an object i think already you know that in programming you are also using you know java and c sharp all people know that dot operator is used to access a object um, property it may be anything okay you know that you can access the object now guys you can see that i am checking the ng if condition the item length is not le not equal to zero then i have looped the data why i'm looping because i have to display the each and every data loop the data and you can see that i can able to see here now suppose I go and put task one. We can add. You can see that task one is added. Now task two, task two is added. Task three, task three is added. Let's go to and show this one inside our here. Now guys, look into this part. Task four. 
এখানে হচ্ছে ট্যাক্স ফোর ইজ অ্যাডেড ট্যাক্স ফাইভ ট্যাক্স ফাইভ ইজ অ্যাডেড ট্যাক্স সিক্স সো ওয়ান ইজ গোয়িং টু অ্যাড দিস ওয়ে ওকে ইউ ক্যান সি দ্যাট ইটস অ্যাডিং ওয়ান 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 ডিপ টু দিস ডেটা অলওয়েজ রিমেম্বার হুইচ প্লেস ইউ আর ইউজিং দ্য ডিরেকটিভস দিস ডিরেকটিভস দ্যাট ডিরেকটিভস ইজ গোয়িং টু বি ইনক্লুড দ্যাট ওয়ান অলসো ডোন্ট থিঙ্ক দ্যাট ওয়ে লাইক ওকে ফর লুপ ইনস ওনলি এজিকুট দ্য ইন্টার দ্য ইনার ওয়ান নো in html in angular html if you are using the ng for which ever tag you are using which ever the element you are using that is also going to include okay means if i use ng for here the ng for is going to include this tag as well as this tag as well as the inner tag okay what it now now guys you can see now i can able to see all the loops this, this is the basic programming there is nothing is there but we have to know the syntax because this is a different syntax as per the angular so same thing you are doing day by day because you are looping the data displaying the data access the data lot of thing you are doing right now guys our next part is to display the date guys what is, what is the date we have to display now you know that the the to do is contain a date one right this date means like whatever on the creation of a date we have to display the date it, date here okay but the date if you see in this case is displaying in different format it is displaying this one right sunday july this one is displaying this way why is displaying because we are print this data in log due to that it is displaying but what will do we have to display in different format which format let me go and discuss which format we are going to display that is up to us okay now now you have print here the date you have print here the task now what i going to print i want to print the uh, date here let me do guys another things let me mark this this was there and i'll add another div inside the div and i want to print the um, date here let i'll print item dot created on okay and put created on let me save it and now now i'll put suppose um, task 1 now task 2 task 3 now suppose 3 what i can see that this is displaying this format right why displaying because this is the full date representation of the date object it is going to display all the object but what we need to do we need to display the data in our format suppose i want to display the july and to display the different format how i can display this date in different different format what it because you know that when adding the date object it's adding their own date instance because all you people know that when you're dealing with date date contain a lot of thing right the year time zone time everything content but you are doing two string in two string are passing the format based on that is going to convert the format right the same way it's happening here now when i'm going to print the date that time it's going to display all the full structure of a date okay but our intention our requirement is i need to change this data to the actual the our format whatever format we require ddmm yi or whatever format is required we are going to display that way now guys how we can do that means what is the use, use case here i want to change this data or i want to change this data to my format but i don't want to change the data means created on is always be there this is not going to change but i want to change the data format but i am not going to change the original date understand this part means you can transfer you can transform the data in different format but don't want to change the original data just imagine if i change to original data in future suppose i want to change in different format i cannot do then data always be as it is it's not going to change only what i'll going to change i will change the structure of data displaying okay guys if you want to change the structure of data displaying or if you want to change the transformation of data displaying that time we are going to use the concept called pipe pipe means it's going to change the data structure it's going to change the the format of the data but it's not going to change the original data understand this part pipe is used to change the data transformation means it's actually used for the transformation of the data transformation means what it will just change one state to another state but it's not going to change the original data 
now let's go and use how to use pipe inside the application means in this case we want don't want to display this long test we are going to display a standard standard date and time format let's go and display this one now guys here we are going to use the pipe operator you know this is also a pipe operator right this is a pipe operator now pipe operator what you want to use i know that this is a date object right then there is a predefined pipe called date okay the predefined pipe that is called date means when i am using date means i am saying that i want to change this created on to date format let's let let me show you then we'll back here understand this part now let me add your task one and click on add you can see that it is playing july 10 2020 why guys it is playing this way because this is transformation and data is remain there data is not going to change any places but it's only displaying this format based on the data that is happening only for this pipe operator now let me write what is a pipe operator guys pipes or you can use this or symbol okay this is or one okay pipe is used to pipe is used to change or transform the data data from one format to another format okay now again when we are using the pipe it's not change the original data this is this is you have to remember you already got it the date you already got it like the created on is a value this value is not going to change at all okay but the pipe is only used to transformation of the data not change to transfer the data transform the data which format that is we don't know but pipe i have used the the pipe operator i am using the data data here i am saying that I date is the predefined um, pipe available inside our Java inside the angular which is used to transfer the date to the date format okay I'll tell you how to define the format I'll tell you but this is the pipe declaration the the variable name the pipe operator and the pipe name and when you are using the pipe it's not change it's not going to change the original data means after applying the pipe if i go and print this item dot created on you will see that here the date is different here the date will be different let's see that suppose i am going to enter task name task one when we click on r you can see that guys it's displaying july 10 to 20. this is the this part but after that i can able to see the whole string like whole date format means i'm saying that when you apply a date when you apply a pipe inside a variable or any object then this one is not this pipe is not going to change the value it's just change the format of the data due to that it's not going to change the original data you always remember pipe is never used to change the original data it's only transform the data from one format to another format okay now now guys you can see here i can able to see uh, like when you click on task add you can able to see that I am passing this I am going to display this data now suppose you want to know I want to also display the time I want to display other format in this case you can also pipe also taking some argument okay I also taking some argument let me pass my argument now this argument suppose is medium now medium means I, I go and tell all these things let me go and add it here suppose task 1 you can add you can see that it's not displaying this format july 10 to 2010 10 suppose this is our current time right 10 5 pm at 10 0 5 pm this is the time now it will tell me how i know that what is the date format is available suppose suppose i don't want this format i want suppose uh, um, this format 7 slash 10 slash something right then guys we have to first learn about the format what are the date format is available before going that data format available then understand this part first as i told 
डेट इज द पाइप हुई इज यूज टू ट्रांसफॉर्म ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन द डेट नाउ गाइज दिस कॉलन ऑपरेटर एंड दिस वन इज यूज टू पास द आर्गुमेंट बिकॉज हाउ टू क्रिएट ए पाइप दैट आई एक्सप्लेन लेटर राजा फ्रॉम अंडरस्टैंड ऑल्सो ए पाइप ऑल्सो कैन बी ए पारामीटराइज हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू पास ए फंक्शन एज ए पारामीटराइज सपोज जस्ट इमेजिन दिस इज द फंक्शन नेम इज डेट एंड आई एम पासिंग द पारामीटर कॉल मीडियम टू पास द पारामीटर वे आर यूजिंग द कॉलन ऑपरेटर ओके दिस इज द वे वी कैन पास द डेटा Now let's go and understand what are the different different format is available for the date. For that reason, what I'll do, I'll go and type Angular uh, date pipe. Okay. Now if I open this date pipe, I'm going to send this link. I'll paste the link also here. In future, you can also go and check this one. Guys, here if you scroll down, you can find that all are the what are the different different are available. You can see that predefined format option means. You can see that I am using medium one. Suppose you want to use short one, you going to display this format. Medium one is going to display this format. Long one is going to display this format. Full, short date, medium date, all these things are displaying here, right? This is guide the predefined format. Suppose apart from that also, if you want to use your own format, they can you go for the basic format called YUI MMDD format, right? Then you can see that they have given all the format here. You can suppose I want to display the two digit minimum digit. Then you are able to Y. About four digit, you are going to use the Y Y Y Y. It's up to you. Then suppose you are going to display the uh, month in format. It's up to you. Then whatever the week you want to display, week day display. Like lot of I I know that you people already know about all this format when you are using the .dot .net and Java, right? If you don't know also, that doesn't matter. You can go and check what are the format you are going to use. Then based on this format, you can use it. It's up to you how you can go and use it. But there is a predefined format is available for the for the application specific. This is enough for the application specific. It's enough. Okay. If you using mm, it's going to change this way. If you are going to short date, it's going to change short date. Okay. Got it. Now you can know that this one. This medium, you can change up to your own requirement. How you can change? You can go here and change, check it here. What are the things are available? What are the format are available? Based on that, you can go and write your code. And what we will learn? We will learn how to use a directive, okay, and how to use a pipe inside the application. But how to create the pipe? How to create directive? That I am going, going to explain later. But as of now, you understand this part. First, understand the concept. Custom one will going to create letter. Now, guys. Now here. Now you can see that our basic of our program is done now, right? Like um, same way, I can go and add a number of items here, right? Now, what are the things left? If you go to our um, this pick, you can see that. You can see this one, guys. Then after adding, we have a radio button here. Another one, task name. Actually, the created on I didn't add it here. The new feature I have created on. Then edit and delete. Then we have to add edit and delete button. After edit and delete, we have to do the other operations. Right now, just imagine this is our div and everything. Just imagine this is not whole div. This, you always focus only one item. On on loop, it's going to display for all the items. Okay, now. You can see that this is our items. Okay, loop the data. Now, guys, we are displaying task name. We are displaying the this one, and we have display other things. Now, let me do one thing. Organize this one. Like uh, first one is a div. We are going to add a radio button here. Second one is a another div, which is going to display the content. Okay, this content. And final one is going to display a. What is going to display? It's going to display the actions. Okay. Let me uh, add this one. Like suppose for a radio button. Okay. This is for task info. Got it? This is for the action. Okay. This is for the action. Now radio button. Let's add a radio button, but don't do anything as of now. Like same as input type radio. Already know that this is used for add the radio button, right? Radio. Okay. Now you can see that if I go and add 
ask and able to see a red button here let's forward about this guys this thing because we are not adding the ui here ui is going to add later after completion of all the functionality okay now as of now what i'm going to do right suppose let me add a class here you know that every um, css every uh, uh, like element html element content class suppose let me class of all item anything now what i'll do i'll go to this css file and add here a dot items how i'll do i'll write suppose um, border one pixel solid suppose um, whatever and uh, suppose padding um, margin bottom suppose 10 pixel sorry uh, 5 pixel why i'm adding i'll let you know if i save it suppose i'll just want to segregate everything suppose uh, one two three four task going to adding and then i'm going to add you can see that i'm adding the list of list of item here okay because why i'm adding because we, have, we just know the segregation these all that are different 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 just forget about the designing okay i'll show you how to use a class now if you go to the element we have a css file here right in css file you're going to add a class name and use that class name inside here using the class class keyword you already know the class keyword is used to add a stylish class now now work on the this action then only we'll go and discuss about this redo button redo button is used for task completion right when you click on this one it's going to be task completion now now let me add a task button what are we going to add guys we are going to add two button okay the button is one is edit button another button is one is delete button right got it now we have two button here we've added one is um, edit another one is delete okay now click on edit it should be going to edit the data click on delete it should be going to delete the data now guys what we'll do let's first go work on delete because edit will take the time right because edit will go and replace the data update cancel lot of things going to do but let's go and focus on the delete part once click on the delete we want to ask the confirmation do you want to delete if you click on yes then only going to remove the data okay now now let's go and discuss one part here now here what we'll do guys we have a button right we have a button called delete under if you don't able to understand one time just ask me okay and you have a button now delete now guys you know that delete means we have button button contain a click event right you already all know that click event suppose the click event i want to get a function called handle delete okay now i i have to know handle delete now let me go and remove this code it's no longer use okay now let me add the function handle delete okay let me call console dot log suppose delete because i have a button click called handle delete i'm calling handle delete then i'm going to delete it and save it if i go and if i go and click suppose one two three add suppose same item going to add multiple time it's going to display items guys understand one thing here handle delete the function is applied to all the button right click 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 it's going to work let me do one thing suppose now i am in here i am going to click on delete now it's showing delete i am to here i'm going to also swing delete now the question is which item i know that i have clicked because the same ui i'm repeating all the pages right because it's a loop it's a loop it's going to loop all the data now the question is how i know that which item button i i clicked the question is because if I going to click this one, I know that one, two, three. I, I click the three number item. If I click the this one, I know that it's a four number item. If I click this one, I know the first number item, second number item, because we know this one. But the, how the programming know that this is the things. Okay. But guys, if you are going to use the loop, for loop, then I I can able to pass that. Okay, this is the index I have used. Suppose I will tell that this is the index. So zero index one and a two index then i got it but i am using the for each loop here for each loop we, we generally not get the index otherwise we can define a variable we're going to plus 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 the variable get it right to overcome that issue already in in our angular there is a predefined index operator index variable available right 
suppose in this loop i want to access the each and every item index then what i'll do i write let suppose item index equal to index guys what i am doing here understand always remember this is your code this is not like a html this is just a code i am looping the data and second part i am doing the indexing data means i am defining a variable this is called item index and equal to index this index is a predefined variable along with ng4 which is which will gives us the index of each iteration let you understand what i'm saying initially i declare a variable a loop this is called the items i'm going to loop it that okay but suppose i want to access the each and every item index then what happening already it's there what's there it's going to be display if you are going to display let item index you can give any variable because you know that let is used to define a variable right you give any variable equal to index this index is a predefined variable available in angular which is only work when there is ng4 is used means suppose this loop is going to iterate 1 1 1 first item second item third item then it's going to start 0 1 2 3 4 this way is going to start let me show you how it's going to work suppose here i am going to print the index just an example i am to print item index now in this case if i go on 1 2 3 add if i going to add you can see that the index is there right 0 1 2 3 displaying because index starts from 0 now here what i am going to delete up in this delete i want to pass the item index because i will get the particular item index right i going to pass a particular item index in here let me create a argument because it's called because whatever you will pass here whatever pass here should be accept right that is the index now let's go and print console dot log this dot items of index you know how to access a array uh, data using the in of operator this array square operator now let me go and save it if i'll go and uh, suppose 1 2 3 this item i'm going to print it right if i go and click it delete you can see that i can able to see like last task number 34 same way if i click on the delete i can able to get task number 4343 If I go and click on delete, I can able to see two, three, two. How? What I am doing? I am just pass this index. Based on the index, I am to I have to display the data. But guys, what this data, this item is exist where? This items is we are passed passing from this to do up. When we are going to click the delete, we have to send that this item is requested for delete. Then please delete the data. Once we delete data, automatically we need to update the data. Nothing we are going to do it here. Everything we are going to maintain only one place that is called the to-do part. Everything we are going to do it here because we are adding here also. We are going to delete also here. Okay. Now let's go how we can do that. Now understand. Now before going to delete, we have to ask the confirmation. You know that there is a predefined JavaScript code called confirm. Confirm is used to as a confirmation for you right our return type is boolean suppose do do you want to delete guys you can see that confirmation return type is boolean it's going to say that if the human going to press yes it's going to return the true if it's not going to press yes it's going to press it is going to be no now let me save it and let me add the item here and same we going to add multiple items and if you go and click on delete it's going to ask me question do you want to delete if i say okay then it's going to say yes it will go to this yes part otherwise it will go to the no part delete cancel that's fine right now after confirmation we have to send the index to the parent okay you know to send something we have to define a output right then output let me create a function of on delete on delete equal to new event emitter yesterday we have learned about this thing event emitter
event emitter and type what are going to pass we are going to pass the number because we are passing the index right in the index now in this on this delete the this dot hand on delete dot emit what it on delete dot emit what are you going to emit we are going to emit the index right now once you emit we have to capture this one now let's go back to the this one uh, the to do one here here what we'll do we'll write a function called on delete but a right, hundred delete i will pass the event what is event content you know already know that even contain the argument now let's go to the if here i'll write hundred delete index and this is called number okay we'll get the index index here now simple delete the items delete the items write this dot items dot splice which index you want to delete you want to delete from index and start count one i have to delete only one item i'll explain this one let me pass delete item then we'll explain everything okay now okay and enter this item then enter this item enter this item i'm delete this one you would ask this one item delete you can see that item got deleted delete yes delete yes now understand what i did i hope you able to understand this up to this part in list on delete i have emitted the delete one okay it's going to be delete event okay now on delete i'm just emitting the index which index i want to delete the same way to capture the event we are using the on delete right on delete i am creating a function called handle delete and here we are passing the events i explained yesterday events events is used to access the argo parameter of the parameter of a event now when i go to click it here it's a my it's my code handle delete i am passing the index number which index i have passed from this list one now it's going to here in array i know that this is a little bit so different different but in uh, in case of um, javascript if you are going to delete the item then you have to use the splice splice is remove the item okay uh, it's going to be remove the item from the array uh, array now splice i have to pass the index then second parameter guys it's saying that how many items you want to delete i will specify that one item it's going to delete the one item from there only okay now now you can see that after adding this item okay after adding this item now it's going to if you click on delete it's going to confirm the part then it's going to delete the item right once you click on okay you can see that no task found this is the one part we have completed right now now let's go for second part that is called the r part we're going to edit part on a click on edit what i'll do we have to first display we have to replace this component and we have to display the another component that is called what that is called the edit one edit or content what edit content it will going to place the data here and we have, we have a edit we have update and cancel button what it now let's go and design that component on click of edit what we'll do we are going to edit this item okay now because for edit what we'll do we will go and create a component called ng generate component to do edit okay now you can see that now we have another component that is called to do edit but let's go and design the to do edit okay in to do edit what will guys don't going to do that when i add a div suppose a input one okay input one then we have two button right button is uh, update and another button is called for uh, delete uh, suppose cancel button for cancel all right two button we have because when you click on edit when you click on edit it should be display here at this way right now now let's go how to use this one by same thing every time you want to do anything you have to go for input output concept now what i will do in the list if a list on click of edit same guys same credit uh, edit one like on click of edit let me copy this one guys copy and paste it here on edit okay on edit on edit what we'll do we're going to also sending the edit event 
I'm going to send the same event. Let me create the same thing, guys. Let me copy this one and paste it code here called handle edit. Simple here this dot on edit dot emit index. I hope you will understand what I'm doing here. <coughs> right now, this edit function we are going to call in the button. Right in this edit, we are going to click then edit, then we will pass the item index. We are going to pass the item index. Got it? And it's pretty much clear. On edit, we click, it's going to emit the edit functionality. Right now. Now, guys, once you click it here, we have to handle this edit, right? Handle this uh, edit functionality. You know that we are handling the edit, delete. Let me handle the edit one, then on edit, on edit, same way on edit, we'll go to create another function that is called on edit. Okay. And we're going to write the code here. Let me go here and copy the function and create another function on edit. I know that you people will think about this thing, like same code. I'm writing these two places, right? They are only here only guys. Always remember when you create a component, you may be see that all our function name looks like equal, but the working principle of all these function different. They are in case of the list we are emitting. Maybe the function name equal because I'm giving the unique function name, but you can see that we are doing different work here, but here we are doing different work. Maybe function name is equal, but the work is different. Due to that, it looks like the same work, but it's a different, different work. Now, guys, what we'll do now? What we'll do now, on case of edit, what we'll do? We are going to display, we are going to display the, instead of this add, we are going to display the edit component, right? Now, now the condition is, how you know that it's edit? Means, let me define a variable, that variable is edit suppose edit model understand edit model or ed edit item understand edit item the type is i to do because we are going to edit only one item right if you're going to add add and if you're going to add any item if i'm going to click on edit i'm going to edit only this item right i'm not going to edit other right other items means on click of edit i'll get this item index this item of instance Due to that, guys, what we can do? Edit item. Let's create is null. Okay, not null. Let me define this as a not required. Okay, understand because initially this is a variable like right? I've created a variable is object called edit item now initially because on click of edit only you will able to assign the value here right before that there is no value now this question mark operator make this is as blank means it is as empty okay this is saying that by default this variable is a blank it's a nullable okay by default the variable is a nullable now only on click of this button only on click of this this dot uh, uh, on click of this handle edit then only we'll make that this dot uh, suppose edit item equal to this dot items of index but it what i'm doing here guys you already understand i am assigning the items instance to the edit item i think you're able to understand what i'm doing here this is getting the particular index value and this value i'm going to assign the edit items okay now this edit items as content whoever i will click the edit right now let me show this one suppose if i go and print here console dot log 
this dot edit items now you can able to see that if i click on let me enter some items here you can edit you can able to see here in the log the task two three something you clear guys here okay now see it if i click on edit you can see that is i'm going to getting one two one two if i click on edit i can able to see two three two three what i'm going i'm simply adding the items inside this one assigning the whatever index i have selected i am assigning to this variable now now in this variable what we will do now in this variable after edit after edit this variable we have to display in this area we have to display that component which component guys we have to display we have to display instead of add we are going to display the edit one right but let me go there app to do edit but this one going to be display as per the condition what is the condition guys when when this edit item is blank or edit item is not there then only we will display the add one if the edit is there then we will display the edit one means the condition is here ng if edit items not edit items means if there is no edit items available then display the to do app same way here ng if if edit item then display this one i understand this part okay display the edit when edit item has value okay means when the edit item getting the value when we click on the edit that time only this variable getting the value right that time only this variable getting the value otherwise it's not getting value right in this case the reverse of this one is the false means display the add when edit item does not contains any value okay got it clear one now let's go see this one let me add one two three add it here let me add four five six i'll add click it add here when i click on this edit you can see that is getting changed why change guys because you can know that when you click on edit i am going to change this value which value i am going to change the, i am assigning the value to the edit items now edit items now it's not blank it's gotten value now in this case it's going to based on the condition it's going to display edit items here right if the edit items is there guys you will say that okay why i'm not taking null and all this thing i'll go to explain that one now because in the basic programming suppose the object is blank or not you are checking if the item equal to equal to equal to null right writing this way but why i'm not writing that way i'll go to explain now but understand i'm just checking the boolean condition here like i'm checking that if its edit item is there or not all these things i'm going to check it now let's go and understand this part why here i am not adding null null and all this check why am i just adding boolean check guys the javascript is designed in different way it's not like it's not a object oriented programming language right it's just a language just a functional language in this case if i say if true it's a true if null it's a true if blank it's a true if zero also a true means here in this case the item is null okay in this case if i pass if edit items means it will check that it will check that this is null or not if it's defined or not it will check all the condition for that reason i not no need to go and write explicitly this null because by default if i pass this edit item javascript automatically check in that in this case this item content value or not if it's content then it will go and check the other things due to that reason only here i have not pass not check equal to equal to null no need to check why don't want to check because if i pass this one automatically this is going to check everything 
null, blank, um, empty, everything going to check it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now this part is completed. We can able to see. Now, guys, you can able to see the things. What we are doing here on a click of edit, we are displaying this part. Now, by default, it's there. If you click on R, if you click on edit, it's going to display the content. But things will be on click of edit. I should display the one, two, three here, right? I should display one, two, three here. Then only you're going to change it, right? Otherwise, how are you going to change it? Now, let's go and do that way. Now, guys, when I click on this edit, I should pass what? I should pass the edit item, right? I should pass the edit item. Which item I need to edit? Then let's go to the to do to do one to do edit one and define one input attribute that is called the item. Suppose input is called the edit item. And edit item is I to do. And let me define by default as a blank. There is no value is there. Means it is going to store store the edit item instance. Alright, guys. Whatever I will edit here, whatever model I am getting, that model I should I should pass here. Then only it is going to display, right? Now, now in this case, what we will do? We will go to this to do part. In to do here, I will pass that. Um, edit items equal to edit items okay this edit items is instance of this value and edit items is the input of input property of this to do to do item right now got it now guys let's go to this part now we'll go and print this value here right now one two three suppose one two three and click on add you can able to see that we can able to see the data on click of edit now we're passing the data only thing of display you have to display here the value right now what i'll do here i'll go to this component okay you go to this component input you know previously we are using ng model and ng model ng model i'll use edit item dot task Okay. Now what happening guys, I am binding the edit item task to here. Okay. Now if I go and put it 1, 2, 3, click on add and let me add 4, 5, 6 and click on add. Let me click on edit. You can able to see that. I can able to see 1, 2, 3 here. Why? Because you know that ng model is used to bind the data. Now binding the data, I am passing that which one? I am passing the edit item dot task. What is edit item dot task? Edit item, you already know that edit item is contain the input property. In edit item content, I to do object. I to do is content task and created on. <clears throat> In this case, what will happen? Edit item dot task, if I going to pass it here, then automatically it's going to display the data here. And anything is going to change here, it's going to display there only. But the problem you can see that. By changing anything here, the same thing is displaying this part. The problem, right? By changing here, it's displaying because the object is a reference to this part. So when you click on edit, I'm accessing this object, right? This object, I am referring to this part. And when you're operating this variable, then due to this same reference in between these two one, is getting changed. This is the problem. Due to that, guys, what we will do now, Instead of using the edit item task, let's create a variable. We have to decouple the reference. Let's create a variable called task name. It's the string one. <clears throat> In the, the task name is string one. Let me define empty now. Guys, now I to understand ng on init. Because that is the way I have come across here. What is the ng on init? Now understand. This is called the life cycle hook because I know that life cycle hook did not start. Let's start the life cycle hook. Guys, what is a life cycle hook? I know that you know that every time you develop any application, there is a life cycle, right? Suppose browser, browser life cycles of browser start, browser like anything, any application you are developing lot of application. That application you know that there is every software that is a life cycle. Okay, same way when I am creating a component. 
component also contain its life cycle. The life cycle means what? How the starting of a component and ending of a component is called life cycle. And in between that, suppose we are born and will die, right? Same way, when component going to be start and when component going to be destroyed, in between start and destroy, what are the different different stuff that component is going to do? That is called the life cycle. Okay. Now first understand the first life cycle hook that is called the ng on init. I think able to understand what the on init is doing. Suppose when the component got initialized, when this component is loaded into our browser, that time this time this ng on it going to fire. How to do that? You can see that. To do this one, we have to implement on init. On init is the predefined interface is available in Angular, which is used to implement the interface inside this class. This is the Java syntax. You know that implements keyword is uh, implements keyword is available in Java, which is used to implement the uh, this interface inside the application. But in, in .NET, we are using the colon operator, right? But here we are using the implement implements this on init on init is the interface which is going to implement this ng on it interface this ng on init it say this is call only once when the component get initialized okay guys means this function is called once when the component got initialized. Component got initialized means suppose when I go and suppose refresh the page, right? That time this component displaying here. Once the component is going to display in the UI, that time this ng on it is going to be fired. This is the one of the life cycle hook. Okay, it's a life cycle hook. Life cycle. Okay, it's life cycle. In this case, what happened? When the page is getting, suppose when the component is getting loaded into the browser, browser means in our UI, that time this function is going to fire. Let's me go and console dot log this dot edit items. So when page load, I have to access this edit items. Let me save it. If I go there, you can able to see that one, two, three. When edit, you can see that I am able to see all these things. Now what I'll do, guys, the task name this dot task name equal to this dot edit item dot task i'm assigning the variable and this task name what i'll do i'll pass to this model here okay instead of a direct referring to the object i'm creating a variable and that variable i am going to do that here You can see that nothing is changing because I have decoupled the reference. Guys, you will ask me a question. How this reference is work? Guys, in, in Java or C sharp, you know that once you create an object and the object is going to present any places, right? The same context, then what happening? The reference is going to create because object is a reference type. In the same way, guys, when I am passing the data, just imagine this way. I know that you will be a little bit confused there how this is working. But just imagine in to do one when you're creating this access in the index so what happening guys i am just accessing one address of this value to this variable right i'm when i'm going to access the index means i'm just going to give the one of the index value to here means this edit item contain the reference of these items right the whatever index you are passing now, this edit item i am i will pass this edit I am passed to the this edit, control, edit component. If anything going to change this edit component due to this is reference type is going to bind this two way. Due to that, this is called a two way data binding. Means everything going to change it here, it's going to affect it here. If everything going to change it here, it's going to affect it here. Means this is called a two way data binding. Because just imagine we are changing the data in to do edit. But due to this is reference to these two variables, if anything I going to change it here, then it's going to automatically reflect to this variable. Due to that, it's always be maintained the decoupled. 
whose case is required, whose case is not required at different stop. But when you are going to use, use play with the object, always maintain the one thing, decouple the object. Due to that, you can see that I have decoupled the object here. Means eight item is the object reference, but what I did, I have decoupled the object. Okay, now. Now you can see that now we have getting data on click of update and cancel. What we'll do, we need to be update, we need to update the data. On click of cancel, we can simply cancel the data. Other functionality we're going to implement, no worry, we're going to implement, but first we'll complete the basic one. Then only go and implement the other ones. Okay, now. Now guys, let me go to this edit one. We have a two button here, right? One is update, another cancel. Let me create a click function here. Every time I handle update, okay, and on a click handle or uh, cancel, okay. Now, here let me add handle update and handle cancel, right? This two one is there. Now, in this case on update, what we'll do, same logic, we have to send the task name, which task name I have updated, okay, which task name I have updated. But guys, what I am to say here, little bit understand. When I click on the edit, when I'm going to update the data, what I must have to remember, which data I have updated, which index I need to update, right, means I have to store the index value means I have to understand, I have to remember the index number, then only on a click of update, I will update this index, right? Now let's go first change little bit in the in, little bit inside the application. What will going to change guys? In this to do, let me create another uh, uh, interface, it's called export interface i to do edit. In this case, I will pass the um, uh, item that is called the i to do item and I'll pass the index. This is called the number. Understand this way. What I'm doing here, guys. What I'm doing here, I am creating a another interface that is called i to do edit that is contained two item. One is item that is the instance of i to do. Another called index that is the whatever index I have edited, right? In this case, what I'll do, let me change a little bit more. What will change go a little bit more? Let's go to this to do component. Okay, to do component. Instead of designing here i to do, let me define i to do edit. Or I'll change it to i edit to do. Let me change to i edit to do. Okay, now. Guys, here, what we'll do now, in this case, we're getting the index. Instead of writing this code, what I'll do, this dot edit item equal to getting object index equal to whatever index you will pass. Second is the items item equal to whatever item getting. Got it? Understand. Handle edit, I'm creating another object I call edit item and edit item you know that it's a I edit to do. In I edit to do it contain the items as well as the index because the index is a matter for us because this is for primary key for us right because we don't have primary key now we have a primary key for us due to that what we're going to do I have to store the index number index number is the primary key so based on that we have to update all the things now now here is a to do component if you go to this part this edit one in edit what we'll do we have to change the structure what we're going to change the structure i'm going to change the i to do to i edit to do okay now items dot create a task now on update guys on update what i need to do what i need to do that now i have to send the operator task name as well as i need to send the index one then only what will happen i can able to update a particular index right now now what i'll do now on update let's create another uh, another model 
a second guys another model it's called export interface i update to do this is content task name okay not forget about this one not record as of now what we'll do guys let's go to this part only edit part only now on update we have to pass the operated value right in this case let's first create the output one output output on update equal to new event emitter okay now the type will be the i edit to do okay now on click the update what will going to do this dot on update dot emit what are going to emit we are going to emit the new data what data and index index is the this dot edit item dot index whatever index will get it here we are getting from index but the item will be different now what is the item will be different item created on will be the new date because we have updated the data right then the task is the this dot task name just see this one guys what we are doing now understand on click of update what we will do now we have to pass the data what data we have to pass we have to pass the updated data in this case you know that index is required because index is a primary key for us now index i have to pass then i have to click i have to pass the item but this items is the new item right it's a create task name whatever task we have enter changes then created on this created on is a new data right it's a totally new uh, instance because when you're going to edit that time is going to change the new data and time due to that what happening is when i will click on the edit update sorry click on the update now it's going to emit the update updated data so just see the flow on edit i am passing the whatever item got edited after update i will pass the update items right but the primary key is here index number right now let's go to this 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 part the edit part here we have a option here we have a function called here on update now suppose handle update now we'll pass the event now let's go to this handle update part now we'll we'll go to write code it here handle update now what the parameter should be there suppose let me get model and this model is i edit to do got it now if you see this one in this case edit i am i will pass this object this object what type of object the object is i to do object but this i to do object is totally new object and this new object i have passed to this i handle update in this case what will happen guys i am getting i to do i edit to do now here what will do i will update the existing value what existing value guys now this dot items this dot items equal to items of index which index model dot index equal to model dot item got it after that clear the edit now this dot edit model item equal to null saying not now okay. not i explain that one what i did said null now huh? save it we'll see the flow then we'll understand the code now guys let me add one two three add then four five six add okay. now if i click on one two three i'm going to display here let me change this to task name once you click on update you can see that is changed to task name and the data has got changed and the edit item got disappeared let me see what i did first understand what is the use of update now you know that in handle update 
वी आर पासिंग दिस डेटा फ्रॉम एडिट बट दिस इज टोटली प्योरली न्यू ऑब्जेक्ट बिकॉज इफ यू यूज द सेम ऑब्जेक्ट इट विल बी रेफरेंस टाइप राइट फॉर दैट रीजन आई हैव क्रिएटेड इट टोटली न्यू ऑब्जेक्ट द ऑब्जेक्ट कंटेन इंडेक्स सेकंड वन इज व्हाट एवर डेटा वी हैव अपडेटेड दैट डेटा इज एग्जिस्ट हियर नाउ दिस अपडेट इज एमिटिंग द डेटा एंड यू कैन सी हियर इन दिस ऐप टू डू अपडेट वी हैव ए अपडेट फंक्शन हियर एंड अपडेट फंक्शन राइटिंग ए कोड कॉल्ड हैंडल अपडेट हैंडल अपडेट वी आर गेटिंग द अपडेटेड मॉडल लेट मी राइट इट डाउन सपोज अपडेटेड मॉडल अपडेट मॉडल व्हाट विल डू दिस डॉट आइटम्स ऑफ अपडेट मॉडल डॉट इंडेक्स बिकॉज व्हाट एवर इंडेक्स आई हैव क्लिक हियर दैट इंडेक्स स्टोर देयर एंड दैट इंडेक्स इक्वल टू अपडेट मॉडल डॉट आइटम बिकॉज दिस इज द आइटम इज द इंस्टेंस ऑफ आई टू डू and if you see uh, i edit to do it's a same object right now i am just playing with an object nothing else then after that i have blank i have mark as this edit as a null null means i am removing the edit to mark as null you can see that i have defined a pipe putter here what is that pipe putter here this is means this item either i to do i to i edit to do or it's a null i am defining this object is a instance of i edit to do otherwise it's a null i can as assign any one of these i can assign a null value or i can assign a i to edit to do value in this case what i did i have marked this value as null in this case what happening when i click on this task suppose 1 2 3 add add when i click on this edit you can see that in click on this edit is going to there and if i go to change anything i click on update you can see that this value getting changed right now another part is cancel right the cancel one in cancel what will do when i click up edit what will do guys there simple cancel we can cancel the changes we can cancel the value means we have to null this item let me write a function called handle okay for before that let's go to the edit part here define another output called output output on cancel equal to new event emitter okay nothing going to emit it just thing a cancel okay now on cancel you going to ask us it will ask a confirmation do we want to cancel if confirm do you want to cancel if it's yes then this dot on cancel emit because i am not emitting anything i am just emitting the blank value now there is nothing to handle right emit now if you go to a to do here i have to write For the right, I write the edit one. On I write a cancel one. On cancel. Right. On cancel. Handle cancel. If I go to code here, handle cancel. Then simply I will clear the edit. Right. Now. Okay. Now. if you go and save it here you can see that i'll put 1 2 3 click on add 2 3 4 click on add if you click on edit here it's going to display and if you can cancel it will asking cancel if you click on yes you can see that is back as it is once thing you can see that guys i am just playing with an object i have an object and this object i am just updating deleting because we are not using a database right We are just using the other things. Means we are just using the uh, data. And here our primary key is index because we know that when we play with an object, play with an array, the primary key always be an object. Uh, all uh, primary key always be an index, right? And we we are adding the item here and we are marking this as ob, uh, as like we can say that this these all are the different 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 index. Based on the index, we are updating the data and 
you can see here if you actually this time you maybe understand not you understand but if you see the data you can see the flow of the data you can see that every time i am just add the item read the item update the item and cancel the item means clear the item these are the things i am performing okay clear now you can see that we have almost completed our basic things not validation apart from validation we are you can say that we have completed most of the things but the validation all these things we will going to discuss later but as of now just understand this part only part is completed that is called the radio button click on a click of this radio button what we are going to do we are going to this change mark as uh, mark as this is completed and if you don't click it's going to be changed as uncompleted guys we are not going to use the radio button because you know that radio button once selected is selected we, we don't have option to uncheck for that reason what we will going to do we will go and use the checkbox here okay we are going to use the checkbox here instead of the radio button we are going to use the checkbox let me change it will be checkbox you know that checkbox contains one property that is called check and uncheck if i check it and i can able to uncheck it okay means on click of this checkbox i have to mark this mark this as completed if i uncheck i will mark this as un uncompleted okay now now the thing is here mark the field as complete or incomplete we have to know the status right on click of these things we must have to know on click of this one we have to change the value then only we have to know that this is completed on click of uncheck we have to know that this is changed then only we able to know that now let's go and understand this way now guys when i click on this button when i click on this checkbox let me say handle uh handle uh, complete and i'll pass the index i'll pass the index so i'll pass the item index let me write this function you will understand this part guys this handle complete is the function which is bind to the checkbox on checkbox called check or uncheck this is going to fire now let's see and console dot log index okay if you save it if you say i'll save it on click of check i'll you'll see it in the console on click of check it's showing you can see that and click of any time it's getting changed right now guys there is a problem what is the problem here the problem is the problem is but how we know that it is completed we have to store value somewhere right for that reason what i'll do guys let me go to i to do and create a param property that is called completed and okay and the parameter is the data type is boolean okay data is boolean means i'm saying that this is a completed and i will make sure that this this variable is going to store whether the value is completed or not okay now in this case but when we are going to add the item when you click on the click and add the item that time we must have to set what is the status of this item right the completed by default is false because completed is not completed by default completed is false right when add the item button click add the item that time i am saying that this completed is false there is nothing is completed now same way on click of edit on click of edit we will mark that completed as a false okay completed as a false now the real program going to start now what is the real one when i click on this handle complete it's going to sorry a second when i click on this list handle this one then what i'll do i will simply change this value items value as a completed completed or not completed okay now for the reason what i'll do let me click, click it here okay now what i'll do is i'll pass on complete i'll pass index number same same one guys then what i'll do i'll pass on complete 
okay on complete emit this one now let's go to this part which part the add one you can see every time if you're doing anything that time i'm just emitting the things now here list we have a on complete right on complete let me add this one handle complete i'll pass the event okay now here i'll write the code called handle complete i'll pass the index and pass the number right and what i'll do this dot items of index dot let me access the value suppose dot got instance equal to this dot items of index i'm getting the item index then what i'll do i'll change instance dot computed equal to not of instance not computed I'll, I'll write what is the meaning of this one i'll type here this of index dot computed equal to not of instance dot computed guys understand this one i am clicking on on the suppose if i going to click on this checkbox it's going to fire the event that event i'm going to be handling here on complete okay what is on complete handle complete handle complete okay now i'm getting okay what i'm getting get the item instance item instance means getting the value of the instance then what i'm doing i'm going to toggle toggle means suppose computer is false it's going to be true if it's true it's going to be false due to that you know that true not of a true is false right not of false also is it true right not of false is it true i'm just doing the toggling if computer is false then going to mark as true if the computer is true it's mark as false okay then the same way what we'll do now if i go there on this one you can see that now if it's going to see the value let me check that value we'll see that value here you see the value here if i go and print item dot completed you'll we'll see the value here actually value you can see that by default one to two to the four false if i click it you can see that is true see that now on true what will do on false what will do that will discuss later but as of now we'll we'll come able to complete the basic of delete edit update cancel and check and uncheck later we'll go and add the validation add the um, how to store the value inside the now i'll going to store you how to store the value in local storage lot of thing going to discuss okay okay guys uh, let me explain the things uh, what happening here now you just imagine day by day when going to add the code into component our component code is going to increase okay actually the the preliminary principle of the component is component should be compact it should be contain very less code but due to we are doing lot of task what happening now our component code is getting increased day by day that is fine right that is it just imagine a large application if the large application more code will be there now the problem is that it will be more maintainable right in this case what we will do now okay in this case what we will do now we have to create a separate file for code means we are going to create a separate service or separate class in this class we are going to manage all our code now you will ask me a question the same code also going to write there yes so what is the benefit of that let me tell you in our application you can see that we have a list of component we have this one component we have object edit component we have delete co we have also add component three components are using in this place but in in this place what happening guys data maintenance is more data maintaining in three component is now we are doing the same code right means 
every time on click edit we are doing the updation every time you're going to add you're doing some operation right means all these components are interlinked but the problem is here like every time we have to emit the event to check something right instead of doing all these things what we can do we will create a class file we are going to create a file and that file is going to create logic for us just like you are creating a data access layer or you are creating a business logic layer in a business logic layer you are writing your own code right you are writing your own logic in the same way, we are going to write our own all the logic into separate file and that file can be reusable in other different, 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 different part. I'll show you that how we can reusable a class. I'll show that one part. But let's understand what is the problem using the writing a code, all the code inside the component. Okay. Now guys, to overcome this type of issue, Angular is giving us a function that is called a service. Service means you know that who is going to serve that is called service. What is the use of service here? Service is going to create a group of logic like is going to create a logic and that logic we are going to share between different 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 component. When I'm when I'm talking about sharing the data in different different component that time we are going to learn about dependency injection. What is dependency injection? Lot of things going to cover as of now. Let's go and first create a service. Okay. And see how the service is going to EG our work to like because we have all this component, right? We have four components. In this four component, how we can use a service in such a way that we can seamlessly maintain the data between all the places. Okay. Now let's go. To create a service in, in Angular we have a special command for that that is called ng generate service guys you know ng generate component c star for component the same way to create a service you can write ng generate service ng ng s you can also write ng service but short format is s okay ng generate service now now guys i want to create a service but for that i just want to create a folder Okay, what the folder? I suppose I want to create a service folder. Inside that, I want to add a service. Same way, I have added a models folder. Inside models, I have added a models file. Suppose in command prompt, how you go and create a folder? In this case, the Angular is giving, you have to go for directory structure. What is directory structure? Suppose I want to add a services folder. Then I will add a services name, then followed by slash. Then I will give the service name. Suppose my service name is to do service. Understand this part? My service name is to do service. Then when I click on enter, what it will do? It will create a services folder. Inside services folder, it's going to add a to do service. You can see that I have a services folder here. Inside services folder, I have a to do service. Don't give this name to do service. Don't give. By default, Angular is going to add the service suffix after the file name. Don't add the, this service name. And same way, suppose if you want to create any different folder, suppose you want to create an XYZ folder, then ABC folder, you can follow this way. And final last one is the service. Always, whatever before the last slash, all are the folder, and only last one is, is your service name. Always remember when you are going to add any service or any component, anything inside a folder, you can follow this type of command. First is the directory name, last one the whatever command service component, whatever you are going to create, that is that name. Okay, now. Now let's go to the service one. If you see the service, service is created in two files. One is spec file and the one is ts file. Spec file means it's a unit test case. You already know that, right? Let's go to the ts file. Guys, if you see the TS file, you can able to see that injectable provider in just as of now, just ignore this one. This will this we will going to discuss when going to discuss about a dependency injection. Okay. Now only focus about this class to do service. Now you know that a class means class can member, member variable, member function, lot of thing, right? And also we can go and create an instance of a class and same instance we can use all the places, right? I'll tell you. Now, what we are going to do now, let 
let copy all the code of the services all the code of the component to our service then only we can reuse the code all the places okay now just imagine this is your to do service where you are going to manage all the to do work for that let me create one variable which variable is going to store all the to do items like store all the to do items for that reason let me create a items or i can see that to do items and it will be i to do of array got it mean this is going to store all the to do items same as our component this items i am just giving a new different name to better understandment okay now you can see here if you go to do component you can see that we have a add function delete function edit function update function all the function is there now let's go and work on that work let me go and add it here add we are going to add for to add i need to add a task task name okay for that reason i need to add the task name then this dot to do items dot push i have to push the item now complete equal to false you know complete is the key get it on equal to new date okay now task is the task name got it guys same thing i am doing you can see that i am doing the same thing whatever i am doing here only same thing i am doing here but the things what actually i am doing here i am just generalize the code in one file in future if anything going to change i will not going to for any component i will comes to the service and change it here only i'll show you how we are going to implement the storage local storage in this example without touching everything here okay now same way we have another function called remove right or delete the item suppose let me for delete we are passing the index number right index number then we simply go and this dot to do items dot splice then pass the index then the one item right finally another one is update in update we are going to pass the update you know the model if you remember the model i edit model edit to do right you can see that i edit one update one right same thing now in this case this dot to do items understand this code to do items model dot index equal to this dot uh sorry model dot items right. this is add update and remove add so let me do one thing add update and delete this is a remove one okay this is going to do the all things now guys these three codes are available here apart from that we have a cancel apart from that we have other things are available there right okay now let's go and understand that part now you can see that i have just created the same thing but the only difference is i am adding here i am going to add it here okay now let's understand another part guys when i'll go suppose i'll add 1 2 3 click on add you can add 4 5 6 click on add now if you go refresh it you can see that data is gone why it is gone because we are adding in memory mean browser memory adding because when i declare a variable when i'll go and declare a add function all this function this variable is stored inside the browser memory right it's not a uh, it's not a persistent database it's just a just a just a memory in memory database when browser is there it is there when I refresh, it's gone. Right? But the question is, how will go and maintain the data? Understand this part. How will go and maintain the data? Data maintenance is totally different part. Guys, data you can maintain anywhere. You can maintain in, in your database. You can maintain in local. You can maintain in memory. But we have to think that what we are going to implement now. 
as i told earlier we are going to use local storage local storage means this is our storage engine for database for browser using that local storage we are going to store the data how we are going to store the data that i will explain later but let's go first use this to do service inside the component okay now suppose guys you want to use the to do service suppose you in basically you want to access this class what will do you will go and create an object right let obj equal to uh, to do service right same way now if i go and say obj dot create obj dot add is going to add the item obj dot delete is going to delete the item obj did something i going to going to do the same thing right now guys how we can go and use this class inside our application this application means inside our component okay now understand that part then what i'll do i'll go and create an object here right i'll go and create an object here right before implementing this functionality here let's go implementing one thing that is called check duplicate understand check duplicate understand this guys what is the use of check duplicate or i can say that is exist okay exist means check that given task name is exist in items or not understand this part guys first understand what happening i have added a function called is exist the parameter is task name okay parameter is task name this is the most important part understand why we require dependency injection okay return type is boolean means it's going to give us true or false now what will do we are going to search the item here right search the item we are going to search each and every item and get that whatever task name is existed here or not guys for that reason is in advanced javascript we have a find method find method means is going to check that it's exist or not okay like i'll type if this dot to do items dot find it's going to find the data where m dot m dot task equal to equal to task name i'll, I'll explain this one forget about this one if exist if exist the second or no forget about this one return this dot to do items dot fight find index task date equal to equal to task name dot greater than minus 1 is true or false understand this part what i'm doing here okay understand i'm going to check that given task name is exist inside a to do item or not okay for that reason you can see that i am using the lambda query here you can see the link query here what i am saying to do items it's a array right in array there is a predefined function is called find index you know what is the use of find index find index is going to search the specific search the specific um, whatever you are going to pass the argument based on that it's going to send check the index if the index exist then it is going to return the index if the index does not exist it is going to index return the minus 1 you already know that this is a logic right find index code if the index exists it is going to give the index number if the index is not exist it is going to send give us the uh, minus 1 okay now what i am doing here i am checking that this is uh, this is called the lambda expression lambda means is a arrow function you if you someone using the link queue or this kind of code you can able to know that this is a lambda function what i am doing i am going to find the index of the to do item m means guys i am declaring an object you can give any name m dot task name means it go and check each and individual item of the task to the given task if anything going to match it then it's going to return the index if doesn't match then it's going to return the minus 1 means i'll say it here greater than minus 1 means i am saying that if it greater than minus 1 means its index is exist if index exist then it will return as true if the index not exist it's not going to return as true 
is not going to return the value right now now in using this code we can check that the same task name is not duplicate right is the same task name not duplicate means before adding the item we have to check that the item is the item is exist or not if item exist then we will show that item is exist if item doesn't exist we are going to allow to add it now now guys understand the things now here what happening just imagine this is our my class name if i go and create an object suppose uh, let obj1 equal to new to do service suppose i have added some item okay i have added some item added items then suppose i going to check if obj1 is exist i am passing one about t now we'll go and check inside the it will go and check that item is exist to do items or not right the same way if i go and create another object okay let me example before that let me add obj dot add obj1 dot add suppose let me task name suppose called t okay now let me go and uh, object 2 equal to new to do service understand this part and i going to check that before adding this add what will go i will check that is exist obj2 is exist what is the return type it will, it, it will going to return me false right so understand this part it's going to give me false this one going to give me true right understand this part i have same class but i have created two object object one object two in object one i have added a item called t and after adding if i'm going to check the t is exist or not then what is the problem what is going to will be true because t is inside this item same way guys what I am going to do if I will go and create another object that is called obj2 with the same class and if I go and check each exist it is going to give me false right because this is a different object this is a different object once the class initialized then everything go to reset right then it is going to start a new thing now you can see that in two object in two object this is the problem problem means if you're going to add an item here, it's not going to reflect here. This is this is the principle of object oriented programming, right? Once you create an object, then this same object is not going to access in another object. OBJ1 contain T, then same T cannot access in OBJ2 because OBJ2 is a totally new instance. Now, guys, in this case, the problem is a different one. What is the problem here? Suppose just imagine the click of this add, we have to check the item is exist or not right item is exist or not we have to check this item only this component we have to check that item is exist or not after the item is exist or not if not exist then only we are going to emit the data to add same thing means all the checking is happening in this place add component okay but if we we'll go and use this class if you go and use this class in these two components suppose add component and list component or to do component then if you are going to create a new new object for each and every component suppose give an example it's a to do component right if you go here and say suppose uh, uh, if you are going to say that um, service uh, to do service equal to new to do service let us understand now this service instance is belongs to this this component same way if i go to add one if i go to add one again if i go add one and create the another instance okay suppose called a service suppose called add service equal to new to do service just example you can see that due to I am creating the same service in same service, same class, but I am creating a different different object. In this case, this service is all the data belongs to this class only. 
this service is going to that contain this class only means there is no link between this component to this component again we are doing the same task because if you are going to initialize a class you already know that initialization class means it's going to create its own instance right there is no sharing instance now guys this is the problem of using a class because the data is now isolated in to do component is different data in add component is different data because object is different different now how we can go and create a object in such a way that same object is going to share between to do component as well as to do add component means i will say in such a way the same object the same object can be accessed in all the components then only i can say that this obj1 if i go and check this one if i going to add this item in one component and the same thing i going to check in another component also this obj should be refer to this this object only means i am saying that we have to create a object in such a way that this object should be give a shared to all the components shared means it's going to give the same object to all the components guys guys to achieve these things to share the object to all of the components that time we are going to use dependency injection i know that you people already work on dependency injection in java or dotnet core but let me understand that is the use of dependency injection in this angular in angular dependency injection means you can going to share the same object to all other component due to that for top of the class they are writing injectable if you are going to mark a class as injectable decorator then it's saying that this class is ready for single object you can see that it's a single turn object means it's going to create only one object the lifetime of the application means once the application got started the is going to create in one object and that object is going to accessible throughout the application means here if i going to create a service here the same service can be accessed here without losing the data it's not going to create the another instance okay now we'll see how we can use that dependency injection inside our application understand one thing understand one thing regarding dependency injection guys dependency injection is always going to create a single turn instance single, I, i know if you all, all know the one object for all the component means di dependency injection is used to create single turn instance for application okay an injectable is used for creating creating the di for the class understand means if i use the injectable on top of a class then you can see that it's a dependency injectable means you can able to dependent it is a enable the dependency injection through the application what is provider in we'll discuss later let's go to that point first okay now now guys you can see that to do service we have a dependency injection now we'll see how to use this to do service inside the application let's go to the add component guys first go to add component because this is our primary component without this nothing is going to happen right add component now in add component we have to access the service guys to access the service we have to use you have to inject that service inside the this component to inject a service inside a component then you have to use the constructor you know that what is the use of constructor constructor is used to initialize the member variable also we can define a parameterized constructor right now guys in this case what happening we have to inject the constructor in inside the constructor we have to first inject the this service then only it is going to create automatically the instance now let's go inject this one let me create a instance which is called service suppose service and the service type is to do service okay now this service 
I have injected in customer means when the application start and this to do component is going to initialize in getting in memory by default the to do component create the instance of the service and store into the service variable means when the application is going to run it that time the service variable is create getting the object of to do service then you will ask me a question how the to do service getting object how the to do service getting the object that is the use of this injectable injectable is going to create the global object for this particular service then when we are going to use that service inside a component or inside any places then automatically we are not going to create an object this is going to create an object for that the creating an object of a service that is called dependency injection because we are injecting the service inside the inside a component but we are not creating an instance i know that you people are using di in your project if you are .net you are using the .net core you are using the dependency injection by default is there in java also in spring boot also you are using dependency injection repository pattern same thing is following in the here only okay means using the service constructor you can able to inject the data okay now what i what i did i have created an object of this one this is the service is the object and the type of the object is to do service okay now now guys before add okay before add what we're going to check we have to check that the value is exist or not let me do that suppose i want to access this service now before add we have to check check that task name is exist or not understand exist or not first understand where i written the code the code is written inside this is exist okay now i have to check this code now where is code just a second guys i have to go and write this code here okay now our task you know this is the function is firing when i click on the add and let's go and check it here if i have to check if this dot service because you see the service is not coming here okay I have imported service here, but not coming here. Guys, now we will learn the new stuff is called access modifier. You people already know the access modifier. Private, public, protected, internal, protected, internal, lot of things. Because basically we are using private, public and internal. Now let's go and understand what is the access modifier. Access modifier is giving the permission to a function or a variable, whatever you can say that, to how we are going to permission the access level, right? Suppose you want to define a variable called private, it's not going to access outside the class. If you define a variable, variable or function is public, it's going to access inside the class as well as the outside the class. Same way, if you're defining a variable as a protected or a function as a protected, it's only going to access inside your inherited class or child class, right? This is the all about the this um, access modifier. The same thing is going to create it here because guys what happening you are injecting the service here right when you are doing injecting the service here you are doing injection service here then we have to specify what is the access level of this one if you don't specify the access level this one for the constructor this is only access inside this scope understand this part if I don't specify the access modifier of the variable or anything in the constructor then this one is only accessible inside the constructor, not outside the constructor. For that reason, what I will do, I can either access private or either, either access public. Not even if I access public, then it's going to access outside this constructor also. Okay. Then I have specified the public here. Means I am saying that the service is a public. Now I can able to access the service inside this place. But in your program, actually in your program, what you will do? You are creating another variable, right? You are creating this way, right? Suppose uh, service is called to do service, and uh, what are you doing in a program again? This dot service equal to service. I think you are doing same way inside your application, right? Instead of writing all these things, Angular is giving different way. No need to define another variable to assign the service. Simply go and add access modifier here. You can add a private or public. It's up to you. Once I add a private here, now this service is accessible throughout the class. No need to define another variable and assign that one. 
that is the use of the angular dependency injection okay now you got it how to use a service now guys before add into the task i have to check that whatever task name i am giving that is exist or not let me go this one this dot is exist guys is exist is a function inside this to do service now here i have to pass the task name this dot task name okay check means exist means true true means it's going to say that it is exist else else you will go and send as it is going to add as, as it is okay it's going to add as it is now it's true means it exists then we will display a error then alert okay you can know alert is used for display the alert in javascript alert um, suppose task name already exist okay guys task name already exist now if i go one one two three click on add you display if i go and click add you can see that it's not happening why it's not happening we'll see that okay what happening we'll see that first why it's not happening okay now guys go and learn about new concept is called debugging how to debug a angular application that is the most important part because we are getting some error because i don't know what error is coming because based on some requirement it's not working now we'll understand what the problem because you don't know like what happening in the code in this case what we're going to learn it we're going to learn the concept called debugging debugging means how to debug the application okay now guys debugging is only enabled in the development build development build means when doing the active when you're doing the development that time only we can able to do the development only you can able to debug the code in production build we are not going to access the we are not going to access this um, we are not going to access the debugging only the development we are going to access the debugging then how can do the debugging for that reason in the page right click okay right click and go to inspect and click on the source remember this one click on the source let's go and explore this part first in source you can see that we have a list of things displaying okay the index lot of thing displaying but what we are going to do you can go and simple go and control p control p is used for search the file okay control p simply go to this search source and you can use control p for uh, open file control p now what is the file name we have issue the file name we have issue is called to do add component okay to do add component let's go and show to do add component once you click the file you can see that all the code whatever inside our files is showing here only you can see that it is showing here only now suppose add function when you click on add only this function is going to call let me go and plug the breakpoint here you know how to debugging all people know that but i'll show you how we're doing in the browser you will put the breakpoint here it's called 31 point line i will go to breakpoint i want to click on add it's, you can see that it's going to fire the breakpoint here now you know that f10 is used to go back and um, this is used for f10 11 is used to go up and down up go to down and inner down also right let me check that service you can see that to do items is blank now displaying to do items is blank okay it's different to do a blank means item is not adding into to do items now let me go add it okay now you can see that why guys is not adding because to uh, because what happening here the to do items we are not pushed into to do items because after adding the is exist okay we are checking where it's check, going to checking it's going to check inside this to do items right but the thing is these to do items we are not calling this add function we are just check the function we are not going to add the function after adding only we are going to check the is the exist or not right then let's go back to the this component which component guys the to do component here what we'll do 
here you can see that I am storing inside the items only. Okay. Instead of doing items, I have to use which one? I have to use the service one. The service one. Let's do inject this service now. Okay. We will go and inject this service now. How to inject? You know that. Private. You can give any object to do service. Okay. To do service. Now understand. Now the same service is available two places. One is to do component and to do add component. As I told, if I'm going to use a dependency injection, that means it's creating a single object for throughout the application. It's not creating a multiple object. Okay. Now in add, in add instead of calling this add, what we're going to do? We are going to going to do this dot service add. I will pass the task name. Let me remove this part. Okay, let, let it be there. Let it be there. Because you can see that this I am going to add service only. I am not going to use this items anymore in future. But I am just showing I am going to add the item. I am going to show you the duplicate part. Let me save it. After saved, you can see that I have 1, 2, 3. Now if you same go and click, let me put the breakpoint here and I click on the add. You can see there breakpoint stop here. If I go to mouse over there, you can see that to do items getting the value. Got it? Getting the value. What is the to do items? This is the same items, this, this items. Right? Now, once I click on this one, it's going to show that task name already exists because the task name already exists inside this array. Same if you're going to click it here, you can see that already the task name content called 1, 2, 3. Right? Now, this way you can see that we have maintained the data inside across two component. You can see that these two components are totally two different, different classes. But due to dependency injection, we you see that these two components sharing the same instance. Here, once they are the data, in the in the to do component once you add the data this data also maintaining the same data inside this task also we're going to check the eject list means the help of dependency injection we can able to manipulate the data we can do the change the single single turn of the data right this is the use of uh, this service now actually this is a basic example but we'll go and implement a little bit more advanced i'll show you how to do actually full-fledged application now I hope you able to understand this dependency injection, how dependency injection is sharing the object using this injectable. We'll go and discuss this provider in a little bit later because that is not cases now. We'll go and discuss that part. Now, guys, let's understand this part. After we refresh, you know that after we refresh, the data is gone. There's no place to store the data because data is stored inside our memory. But as a developer, as an application, you must have to store the data. The data can be stored in database. It may be MongoDB, it may be Cassandra, it may be Cosmos DB, it may be any SQL. It's up to you how you're going to design the database. For API, you may be develop .NET, you may be develop Node.js, you may be develop um, Java Spring Boot. It's up to you what we are going to use it. It doesn't matter. But the thing is, I'm going to show you how to store the data in the browser. Means we are going to store the data. If you are going to refresh the page also, the data is not going to store. It's not data is not going to remove from the browser. It will always be there. Until and unless you are not going to delete that one, it's not going to, going to be delete. Okay. Now let's go first create that one. How to store the data in browser. Okay. Now first understand the storage mechanism. What is the storage mechanism? Guys, as a web developer, you all know that previously we have only stored storage mechanism in client side, it is called cookies, right? Cookies is used to store the data, but you know that cookies has some limitation. limitation. What is limitation? Cookies cannot be stored more than 4KB or something because I don't use cookies as of now. But you know that for older development, we are mostly store the information cookies because that is the that is also the size is small but when the browser is now 
that new new browser is coming they are adding more more uh, storage mechanism inside our application what is the storage mechanism that we first understand then we will go understand other parts guys one is in memory in memory means suppose you are declaring a variable you are, you are creating an array you are doing all these things that is stored in the variable in the memory of the browser when browser going to refresh or initialize that time all the memory got clear you already know that when the class got initialized that time everything going to be clear and going to create new instance same way when i'll go and add the item into array okay and you know that this data is going to store inside the memory and in the memory is always be changeable if i refresh memory going to be refresh all the time it's just like your ram but how we can maintain the same data inside our application in such a way that we have to maintain the data in as long as we can for that reason browsers are giving their own memory storage because you know that browser also running on system they have also own space right browser also going to giving the own space for the application that they can going to access directly to the hard disk hard disk means it's not going to access your d or c drive but it's going to access your browser disk browser memory now the browser memory means that is two things one is in memory that is going to be refresh when it's going to be uh, when the application is going to be refresh or going to be closed or something another memory that is called the fixed memory that is going to be stored is inside your application now let's go understand that memory if you go to inspect you can see that i am in source if you go to application click on application now you can see that in left hand side you can able to see storage okay you can insert the storage now inside the storage okay inside storage you can see that we have storage local storage session storage index db web scale cookies trusted token interest group now today we are going to discuss about only local storage for cookies is the cookies is the oldest one which is used to store the cookies but we are not going to use cookies as of now cookies is not going to use because you know that cookies has some limitation cookies has going to store very less amount and it can be changeable next go to the focus on local storage guys what to understand what is a local storage okay local sir, can you give a hello yes yes uh, sir can you tell me why we use all these storages just explain uh, in yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. yes 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 local storage yeah i'll tell you i'm going to do that one by one okay guys i'll only going to explain this three this three are your web sql is belongs to the only this uh, uh, this index db session and storage this three are the web standard one we are going to use this web standard one this web sql is belongs to google only and that is different different storage engine that is specific for chrome but this three storages are the most important to know let's go understand this one by one storages i think you already know the cookies cookies is stored to store the very less amount of data let's go understand from bottom to top let's first understand index db guys index db is the rdms of the browser suppose you know rdms query right select update delete all these things suppose you want to do that is the index db this index db is going to store all the rdms format or relational database to your application means suppose you want to create a table you want to run a index you want to going to uh, create a suppose table this is for that reason we are going to use index db now you will ask me a question what is the use of index db suppose guys you are developing an application and that application you want to support the offline also means suppose the, if there is no internet also you want to store the data in the data inside you want to store the data inside the database in offline mode suppose you want to work on offline mode then you can use the index db index db is more power than other storage engine because it's a database only it's just like a database okay you have to insert update delete you can do everything inside this let me open this thing because if there is uh, let me see this one yeah there's nothing is there this is the my, my one you can see that 
it's a content key value pair database means here you can do also do the manipulation but index db size is more you can use the 50 mb like more than database you can use the index db mostly index db is used to do the offline work okay suppose you are doing any offline storage then you can do the index db work okay now let's go to session storage guys you know that session one session means suppose you logged in and logged out session is gone right suppose when i open the tab and i open another tab now suppose you want to develop an application it is going to tab by tab same application suppose one tab is open and you are doing something and same tab is going to open another 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 one going to same tab then that time you don't want to store the data you want to clear the data that time we are going to store the session storage session storage guys is this mechanism which is only store the data in active tab or active window means same page if i'm going to open another tab it's going to clear the data understand this part that is the difference between local and storage local and session in session storage if you open the tab and doing some operation here to the using the session storage and if you open the same tab new tab then session is going to expire because session storage is only specific to same tab not other tab okay now what is the use of local storage local storage is the permanent storage means if you are going to navigate from one tab to another tab if you go to any tab the data will be remain there and all the data is going to store in dictionary format you know already know dictionary right the hash map format key value pair format every database local or session storage is going to store the data in form of dictionary or hash map or hash set means we have a key and we have a value we have a key we have a value right this is the way we can able to store the data inside the application and what type of data we can store we can store a normal data we can store a string data we can store object we can store everything but the key and value always be a string key is a string value also a string because it's a normally key value pair of data right but we can be able to store the json we can able to store a object we can store everything inside the key value pair using the local storage but i will show you how to go and use that one okay now now you able to understand the difference between these two local storage is going to maintain the data tab by tab any tab you open that will be there session storage is only focus on one tab suppose you are going to store in one tab if you open the same tab in another another window now the data is going to be lost index db is used for do the rdms operation inside the application you are going to write the sql query to do the operation this is used for the offline work and this is going to store this these two are mostly used local storage you just used to store the um, token suppose you are generating a token generating a refresh token the user information like whatever information commonly used for the application that is going to use inside the local storage now this local storage we are going to use for maintaining the data inside our application okay yeah now let's get started with this local storage okay local storage is not part of the angular understand this thing the local storage is not a part of angular local storage is part of our browser if browser doesn't support local storage then it's not going to work okay for the reason if you are going to implement local storage you have to know that which browser you are targeting but nowadays most all the browser it may be chrome firefox and edge all are supporting the local storage now let's get started work with the local storage okay now now guys local storage is maintaining key value pair for understand what is key value pair key value pair means you already know that a dictionary contain a key value pair key is a unique all the time and value you can add any time it may be string it may be number it may be object it may be anything but in our case you can see that our object is array our object is a to do of array but as i told the in case of local storage we cannot store a object because the key and value always be a string type understand this part this key and value always be a string type key is a string value also a string means we have to go no, sorry string means it can be number it can be string it cannot be object now how we can go and change this object to array of object to string okay 
that is the part we have to first understand before going that let's go and work with the local storage okay now guys let me define a object called let, let me define variable called private it is called the suppose um, uh, key let me key equal to suppose called to do The key is to do item. First, understand what is key. I am going to define this is the key for local storage. Yeah, this is the key for local storage. Means this key, whatever we are going to add it here, that is the local storage key. I am giving the key name to do items. You can give any name. I am just giving to do items. Okay. Okay. Now, now suppose there is a let me before after r to this variable okay let me do one thing what i'll do i'll do one thing first add to the local storage Sorry. okay because i am adding to the this variable right but this variable in memory variable but now i'm going to add to a local storage then how to add then local storage guys local storage is a predefined variable exists inside the our javascript code it's not angular part okay it's a javascript code local storage dot set item if you work on the dictionary of what like if you work on dictionary or the hash map or hash set you already know that there is a dictionary dot r dictionary dot remove lot of is there right then we have to set the item you can see the set item there is two uh, argument here one is key one is a value as i told every time that the local storage contains the value in form of string string there is no object nothing else okay now i have to string first i have to pass the key key is this dot this dot key keys to do items now guys second one is our value but you can see that the value is saying as string right but our value is a to do of object right it's a to do of object let me do one thing let me copy this code and paste it here let me first add into items as of now you can see that now i have to add these to do items inside this set items but set item second parameter is a string but how i can convert this object array of object to string as for that reason we have a another concept is called json json dot stringify what is json dot stringify let me understand what is json stringify json stringify is a functions available in javascript which is used to convert a object to a string format if you work on the newton json like the library in the dot net or in java i don't know in that case there is a serialization and deserialization right if you're going to give a string it's going to convert a object if you're going to give an object it's going to convert a string that's the way in the javascript if you're using the json stringify it it will it will if you're going to pass an object here it's going to give the object json structure of a stringify means if i'm going to pass these dot items then it will convert the this these dot items to a stringable format a string format as a json structure let's i'll show the example then we'll go and discuss this one okay and what i'm doing on a click of add i am going to add into this variable that is okay we are not going to emit as of now but after that adding to the local storage to add local storage we have a function called local storage set item the key name and the value okay now let us save it now guys see this part you can see this blue color part and i'm going to here okay this selected part gray one let me add one two three and click on add you can see that something happening no you can see that now it's updated what updated to do items is your key got it to do items is your key now you can see that this is our json one 
and see that is a J sun one. Because that J sun dot stringify convert that code into this format. J sun stringify convert that object to this is the string representation of that one. I hope people are able to understand what is the use of stringify. Stringify is used to convert object to his JSON string. That's the reason it's going to change the JSON string to object. You can see that. If I click it here, it's going to display in this format. Means I have one one item here. Same way I will go and click on two, four, five, six. Click on add. You can see that it's not going to update now. You can see that two item is added. Right? Two items got added here. Now means if I go and refresh the data, if you go and refresh the data, you can see the data is not displaying, but my data is still there. My data is still there, right? Means what I'll do now on the page load, I'll call this function and get all the data. Understand this guys, what I'm doing on the page load, because I already the data is there because if I refresh the page also, data is not going to, not going to be clear because all the data is there. Now what I'll do on the click of this function on the page load, I'm going to call this function and get the data from this local storage and display to the page. Now let's do that. Now you can know that this is going to be shared the data. Now after that, what will do? Suppose load data, load. Okay, we write a function called load. Load is used to load the data to the load the data from the local storage to this variable for that reason what i'll go uh, what i'll do to write local storage dot get guys you know that set is used to set the value get is used to get the value now get is accepting one parameter that is called this dot this called key this dot key let me store a variable called const const suppose um, values value you can see that i have declared a variable is called value which is store get okay now guys you know that that local storage always store data in string format and get in string format also if you going to store the data in string also also going to get that in string format you can see that this value is a string right you can see that this value is string but how we can convert this string to this object right then only you can do that now for that reason what we'll do we'll check we'll check that the value is exist or not because if there is no data, suppose if I go to clear the data, in this case, the, this will not write it's blank. Then what will write? I'll go write value. If there is a value, then what I'll do, guys, I have to change from string to object. For that reason, we have a function called suppose bha, sorry, let items equal to okay, let items equal to JSON dot parse json parse you can see that convert a javascript object notation json string to an object if you're going to pass any json string here it's going to convert this json string to a object right now again check null if there is nothing will be there so some error will come then it if items if there is items because every time I'm going to check the null check okay first check value is there or not after value, I am checking to parse to object. And again, I am checking the null check here. Is there any value null or not? Null check. After null check, what I will do? I am going to assign this dot to do items equal to items. Okay. Now, I got it, guys. First, I get the value in a string format. Then, do a null check that value is there or not. If value there, then again, I'm going to parse into the uh, object. Again, also check that the value is uh, blank or not. If there is no that is successfully parsed, then assign that value to the value to the to do items. Now, a to do items is going to be exist data. Now, what, 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 what are we going to do? Now, inside this page, 
which page in the to do page what will do in the page load as i call this a page load this page this dot service dot load now what we're going to do it this is load the all the existing task into task from local storage understand this part guys but it now load function is going to load from the local storage i'm going to load it right now if i'm going to refresh okay now one two three add it then four five six add it now you can see that local storage is getting two items if i refresh now i'm not not getting anything because that is the reason but we are getting the data here right it is the data zero one two three items are there okay now let me add one two three four five six seven okay we have added these three items we are not doing any edit and update that will go into that part first look first you know that how to use the storage engine now guys now you can see here one thing again i am getting all the data that is fine but let's go and do for the display the existing data because if i refresh also i should display the one two three four five six item here right now for that reason what i'll do if i go to do items if i go to do items now this is the variable which is used to send the data from this here to that way right for the reason what i'll go to do that guys after load after load the data what i'll do i need to set this data into this task which task this task item then what will do after load set the items then this dot items equal to this dot service dot to do items because in load we are set the data to to do items right after set the data in to do component i am going to assign it to items in this case what will happen when page load you can able to see that this is displaying the data okay you can you will show the data let me delete this one you can display the data here right what i did guys simply i load the data from the local storage and assign that value to the to do items the to do items is the main items for the application now after that what i did to do component after i load the data assign the to do items to the items you know that this items is the variable which is used to display the data later we'll remove that one but as of now you know that we are able to see the existing data right now now this is the one data we have delete displaying now what about the delete and update okay what about delete so if we go to delete the data i have deleted the this particular item but see one thing here if you go to the local storage you can see that we are maintaining only one key this one key is storing all the information right it's so one key is storing all the data means again we have to pass the data and remove the data again we have to update the data every time you have to do to anything whatever things we are doing in manually here same thing also we're going to do in the case of delete let's go focus on the delete part okay now this is called a delete remove right before remove before remove let's do one thing let's get the get the data okay get the existing data existing data means guys what after the splice okay after delete what i'll do we need to update update the to do item into local storage Here, here you are deleting the data, right? After you delete this data, what you will do? You need to remove this data from the local storage. How to remove the data? Guys, we are not removing the data. We are just updating the data because we have only one key. 
one key containing multiple values now we are going to remove this item item after removing all item then again going to update the data in this case what we are going to do here again the same code because we are removing the items we are not removing the key we are just removing the inside the items of these to do items right for that reason i am just removing the items i am removing the whatever items then after that whatever left I'll update inside our local storage. Let me show you. Personal example, suppose I want to remove this delete. So remove this delete, you can see that in this case, nothing is there. I don't know why it's not working. Why not that is the reason? Because we are not calling this function, remove function. Let's go to do component in delete. Let me do one thing. Let me write it down. This dot service dot remove and this is the index. Okay. Now guys, now you have to remove. Now click on delete. Now okay. Now if you go on back here, you can see that that item got deleted. Right? What got deleted? Guys? Nothing deleted. What we are doing? We are just operating the data how we are adding data into the to-do items same way i am removing the data from the to-do items right now it's going to delete the data now let's go to the other part after delete you can see that we are remove we are updating the local storage second one update update one let's go and focus on the update one as the update also going to the same thing after update we are going to update the local storage okay now update then what will do this dot service dot update and the update model suppose i click on this one two three and going to support task and if i going to update if i go back and come here you can see that it's going to change the task the okay, same thing I am doing, only thing I am changing that I am instead of writing the instead of doing the memory, I am using the this local storage only. This is the way you can able to manipulate the storage engine. Okay. Now let's back to the this question. Like uh, she wants to know that how the update is working. For that reason, we'll go and discuss about update. Okay. Now understand the update part. Guys, th look into this part. What I'm doing, I have this object, right? Always remember this is the object. In this object, what will happen when you click on edit? I'm passing, I will pass this object to this component. After update, whatever updated value is happening, that value I'm going to pass this index. Same thing actually I'm doing in the case of this edit and update. Now let's show you. On in case of update, on case of this edit first we are going to edit right in edit we are going to create a edit item this is i to do object this contain a index as well as the item whatever item we are going to click it here that instance is going to store it here now let's go understand another part after edit i am going to pass this object to this edit edit component as a input okay now again there is a variable which variable is going to store the task whatever task the name is there is going to store in the task now this task is going to store inside this is going to add it inside the ng model and whatever i will change it here that is going to be reflect in that ng model right after that once you know update what i'm doing i'm just emitting the data data means I am emitting the index and whatever updated data means the data, data, data is going to change, the task is going to change, the computer also by default false. Once you click on update, it's going to emit the data. That emit I am handling here as a edit model. After that, I am updating the index here 
and clearing the edit item. This is the way I am flow the data from update to cancel, cancel to update all these things. Okay, but what we have learned here, how to maintain the data using the local storage. But the things we have left is called validation, right? What is validation we have left? We left validation is called the required. Suppose if you click on add also, you can see that blank item is getting added here. You can see that. You can see that the blank item getting added. Is it blank item getting added? Now the question is, why this blank item getting added? Let me see. Okay, now you see why, why this is blank item getting added. You can see two item getting added. That is not an issue. We will do that fix. You can see that it's happening. Now we'll do the validation. Guys, validation is totally different stuff. Let me go and learn about the validation. How to do the validation using the Angular. To do the validation in Angular, we have to use the reactive form. Okay, what is reactive form? Reactive form is the, the form. Form means, you know, HTML form, right? Text box, button, drop down, select, all this color as a form. To manipulate the form inside the Angular application, that time we are going to use the reactive form concept. Okay, reactive form is the concept. Using that concept, we can able to change or manipulate the form. Okay, now let's go understand how we can go and enable reactive form inside the application and how we can able to do the custom validation using the reactive form. Okay, we're going to do the validation inside the form. Now guys, first understand you can see that our application not fully completed because we are going to complete one by one by one because we're going to integrate the bootstrap lot of things going to integrate here but first understand the basic core concept then go for the next one. Now you know that service is used to do the central work. Central work means it's going to do the, all the centralized work and it's going to share the same object throughout the application, right? Now, but next part is reactive form. Guys, what is reactive form? First understand. Just imagine, this is a form. Form means it's a control, guys. Nothing else, it's a form, it's a control. Now suppose if I go and place an ad, then what will happen? I have to check that this, this field is blank or not. Then what are we going to check? I'll check if the value of this field is blank or not, then we are going to display the error. Simple, I'll go right to the code. What is the code? If I go to add one, on a click of add task, we'll check. I'll check if, okay, if this dot task name not task name, not task name, the task name not exist, then return and before that would alert task name required. Task name required. Suppose I have to give the task like 100, more than 100, then what will do? I have to display another error if again if this dot task name dot length greater than suppose 5 then return then what will display i will display alert a uh, task name cannot be more than 5 cars let's take them 5 i'm giving now what will go do guys I'll go here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We click on add, it's going to throw an error. Task name cannot be more than 5 characters. The same way, minimum character. If I go and write, just understand the problem here. If I go right here, if the task name length is less than less than 3, then task name cannot be less than three characters you don't understand this part again you will go right one two it's if you click it's going to cannot you know, three character i understand the pain here the pain here is just imagine that end number of validation there you are going to write all the code here who is going to write all the code right no one going to write all the code and you can see that if you're going to apply all the validation just imagine how much long code will be there right just imagine this is a validation only. But there is n number of stuff we are going to do inside the 
form. To overcome this kind of issue, Angular introduced a thing called a reactive form. Reactive form is a principle. Using that reactive form, what you can do, you can able to manipulate or you can able to change the structure of a forms. Not HTML, structure of a forms. Then let's go understand what are the things available inside the reactive forms. How how can going to use that? Okay, now understand. Guys, let me understand by a paint. We have to draw things, then we will understand. Can you understand the simple login form? Okay, we have a login form. Okay, and inside the login form, we have two controls. And one button. This is your username. And this is your password. Is a login. Understand this part. If I go and say, what is this one? This one is a control. It's a control, right? Sorry. This one is a control. This one also a control, right? And this black one, whatever is seeing here, this is hold these two control, right? It's holding these two controls. I can say that this username is called as a control, and this black area is called as group. Understand this guys? Means group belongs to group is going to contain controls. This group in tech, in React in, in our Angular is called as form group, and this control is called as form control. Understand this part? If you see here, if you can see here, this is a this twelve text box is a control, right? It's a normal control. Every control inside the component is a com control. Every control, if I go to render into HTML, it's a control only. If this control is a group of control, then it's called a form group. Means form group is going to contain form group is going to contain form control. Means this form control is individual control, and this form group is the group of form control. Same as Group of a form control is belongs to something, then it's called a form array. Means form array, form group, and form control. Form array means it's a group of form group. Form group means it's a group of form control. Let me write it down. I don't understand this part. Reactive forms is contain basically three parts. Let's understand this concept. After that, we're going to implement this one. This reactive forms, guys. Reactive forms is used to work with the HTML forms. It's used to work with HTML forms. Okay, reactive form contain basically three components. One is form control. Understand this part. Then we'll go go for lunch break. Form control. Second one is form group, and third one is form array. Understand this part. Then we'll discuss. Form control. It's it's a it's just a HTML control form group it is a group of form control form array it is a group of form group understand this part 
if you closely look form control is represent to one control form group is a group of a control and a form array it is a group of form group it's an array now today today we are going to implement these two things form array is not uh, suitable for us we will going to use later but as of now understand form control form group going to understand we do use it on, inside our application now let's go and understand how to use a form group inside form control inside our application to use form control or reactive form inside application you must have to add the form reactive form module inside the app module i'll go to this back later the way we have added form module the same we're going to add reactive reactive form models reactive form modules is the module which is going to use enable the reactive forms application inside our application okay now First, we'll go to this part, add part. Okay. Now, add part. What will what will do? First, we'll go and build the form. We want to build the form. Now, build the form. What will go? I'll go to inject the another um, service called form builder. Form builder. Now, let's create a form. Form. It's a form group. It's a form group. And this dot form equal to the form builder dot group. Okay, group suppose called task name. I understand this part. Let me write it down. Then form builder dot control. And this by default value is null. Then validator dot required. I'll I'll explain everything, guys. Just see what I'm writing here. Validators dot required validators validators dot max length equals 100 okay now guys you able to understand this part what i'm doing here to build a form okay to generate a form we require a form builder help without form builder we cannot going to build a form i have created a form group guys understand if you see our definition as i told form control is just a html control form group is a group of form control and form array is a group of form form group understand now guys form control it may be one control it may be more than one control it's always going to place inside the form group means there is required at least one form group to add any control because understand it may be one control it may be more than one control you must have to add one form group because group can be contained one or more than one same way in this case in our in our case we have only one control doesn't matter that we have one control means we are not going to create a group we can also create a group for that reason i have declared a form here okay okay form group now form group name is form you can give any name i'm giving form now i have inject the form builder inside our the constructor guys this form builder is used to build a form this is the predefined service is available in the reactive form so what i did i have initialized the form because as i told a form group okay form group contains group of controls right now we have to go add you have to initialize this form group and add the controls for that reason what i did form builder the instance of the form this dot form group form equal to form builder dot group because i want to create a group inside this group what i did i have added i have added one control that is name task name as i told form group contains a group of controls this should be a control right the task name is is the form group dot control and this form group control contains two argument first argument is the default value i am passing null here 
second parameter is the validator validations in angular there is a n number of predefined validations is available one is validator dot required which is used to for required field validator means you are marked that field as required second one the max length by default suppose you want to set the max length you can set the max to 100 means you are saying that this validator is 100 percent more than more than 100 percent it's going to throw an error now when you see that in this summarize i have created a form group it may be one control more than one control doesn't matter it's a form group always form builder is used to build a form for that reason i have initialized this dot form equal to form builder dot group the group is consist of group of controls form controls then group contain one control it is called task name you can give same name you can add more control comma and you can add n number of control it's up to you the task name is a control right its task name is a control in this case what we're going to do this control is belongs to two parameters one is first is default value second one is a validator default value means suppose you want to display by default any value then you use the value i am pass i'm passing null you can pass blank calls it up to you what, what you are going to pass it okay now second one is validator in angular there is a predefined validator is also available that is called the validators validators required means you are marked this field as required means this is must have to enter second one i have enter that length max length means the maximum length will be 100 percent 100 is required to and 100 character is the maximum length now i have built this form now my responsibility is now i have to use this form inside this control okay now let's go and use this one for that reason let me go to this one and here what i'll do i'll i'll remove this ng model this ng model is no longer used because we are using the reactive form now guys what i'll do i'll i'll go and add here form group tag in form group tab this is the predefined form group tab is available in angular which is used to say that which form group is used in this co component okay this component guys why it's used i'm going to explain inside the input i'm going to say that form control name the name is task name understand this part is a little bit more tricky understand this part first guys as i told if you see this example as i told a form group a form group contain group of controls right a form group contain a group of controls suppose for example this is the form group this form group contain the group of components controls the controls is username and password right now in this case what will going to happen guys in this case this is one control this is one control because inside the application you can create n number of form groups because the way i have created the way i have created here form group form same way you can create another form right form one form group but this form contain different com component different control this form may be contain different control in this case how the system know that which control you are using due to that in the html what are doing we are using the form group in the form group we are using in the form means you are saying that inside the startup this startup end whatever control i am going to use all the control is belongs to form only not belongs to form one got it because in one control in one component you can able to add n number of form group it's up to you but adding this form group means i am saying that from the starting and ending i am using this form whatever the control belongs to this form is going to use inside this inside this form declaration due to that guys if i go and use just example inside this form i have a task name is the component control if i are going to use to use the control you have to use the form control name okay form control name is used to okay let me write the things here okay form group is used to specify the specify which form is used for this context 
form control name is used to specify the control name control name of the form group understand guys you have to specify only those form name which form name is exist inside this task name just example is task name as i am going to add it here sir one two three if i go and save it you can able to see that i can able to see an error i'll show that you can i'll show it's going to give an error what error is giving they are saying that one two one two cannot find the control name one two one two. for that reason if i'm going to specify the name here i can only specify those name which name is exist here okay now and the last part after that we'll go for lunch last part is on click of this button we have to check that this field is actually valid or not is valid or not means what it's going to say that whatever validation we have applied to this field that is satisfied or not means just imagine if i click on this button i have to check that this field is required or not or this field is more than 100 character or not all these things right for that reason what i'll do now i'll go to the add function i'll remove everything not required simply add one thing if okay simply add anything if this dot form dot valid guys only this thing if check that form is valid or not guys valid or not else there is else part also that i will talk later valid or not means it's going to check that whatever validation we have applied here this validation is satisfied or not you can see that if you go to else part the alert invalid if i go and save this one you can see that if i go and click the button it's going to say invalid why invalid let me go and source it source okay now I click it here if you click on add button you can see that form dot valid is returning false why is it returning false because i mark this field as required due to that it's going to the else part suppose if i go and put here some item here and click on add you can see that the valid is true right this is the reason we can able to see that how the form is working in the case okay now got it guys how the form is valid we are not going to write all these things but you'll ask me a question okay okay that is fine because um, i am entering it's saying invalid but i want to display the error down of this text box because that is our requirement right we have to display the error down of the text box but what error fire how do how i'll know just example if i change this to 5 okay now suppose i am i have entered the data and i have entered more than 5 then how i know that which error is occurred it's required error or it's a, a max length error okay now let's get started like you know that in before this call we have discussed about this reactive form and i told that right like uh, that in reactive form how we can create the form there here and we have to add the validation as well as we can set the end number validation here but things is when in this case when i'm going to enter the value if i don't enter value and click on add it's throwing me an invalid this is okay but what we want we want to display the error bottom of this text box because this is the these are the basic one right when you see any application if there is an error they are going to show the error in below below to the below to the text box right any control now let's go and see the error how we're going to throw an error and show this one okay now now guys see this one how the reactive form work let me remove this else part let me remove this alert part we'll first see how we are going to see this error you can see here in the to do component okay now we are going to display it here now down to this one we are going to add the down to this text box we are going to add the error one let me do one thing let me add a span here okay let me add a span here inside not span let me add a div here okay 
inside div i'll add form control and another div which is going to add the button okay now inside this div we are going to add the error here okay we are going to display the error here means this is the area okay we are going to display error okay we are going to display the error now let's see the ui how it looks UI. okay that is fine let me do one thing you can see that this layout and this layout is a little bit overlap what i'll do i will go and add some logic here list if you go to css margin bottom margin top i can see that we have spaces now you can see that i have a text box here i have an error error center here error level here now we want to display all the error in this part in this part means whatever error will occur inside our application all the error we are going to display here but how to know the error what error i understand the flow this is my control this control name is task name if any error occur to this control i have to display here now let's go and display one by one error now the first thing is how to access a control if you don't access a control then how are you going to display the error first we'll access the control which control you are going to access we are going to access the control the name is task name now, how to access a control to access a control we have to write the code like form form means it's the instance of the form dot controls controls then controls dot get which control you want to access you want to access the task name you want to access the task name now in this case we have to check that these controls is have an error or not this control has an error or not if there is an error we are going to show the error now let's go discuss before that i'll show you how because button click we are getting the form right we are getting the valid here we will get the access to this control we will see what are the error is there for this particular control let me go do one thing console dot log this dot form dot control form dot get right at the get get the control name task name the control dot errors we'll see first the errors okay just understand this part we'll see the errors now if you go here and click on the add we'll see able to what the error is there it's saying that error is required is true okay it's saying that required is true same way guys if i go and check any other error if i go and type any value here if you click on add you can see that it's saying that max length is there is error and if you go and enter one two three and if you click you can see that the error is the null no error is there let's get started with this one like you know that uh, you can see here guys what the error is coming it's saying that form get errors is saying that is there any error then this value will get the data again there is another function also is called has error guys has error is a function which is check that specific error is exist or not understand the two things you have to understand first is errors errors is going to give us all the errors it's going to give us the error names which are which are invalid which are fire in this control in that example if I go and enter add, you can see that it's giving the required is true. Means as of now, the required field validator is is required field validator is fire here. Same way, you know that I have entered more than five characters. If you click on add, it will show that it's throwing a max length error. If I go and enter only three characters, click on add, you can see that it's showing me as null. Why is showing me null? Because there is no errors. Means a, this attribute is this object contain any error generated by the following validation or null if there is no error means if this is a null then we know that there is, there is no error same way this is the one way you can access a control there is another way also how to access form dot controls 
dot control name control name task name dot errors okay There are n different type of format is there using that one you can able to access a control. First one is you can use this dot form dot get the control name right. Another one is this dot form dot controls and here you can pass the control name. It's up to you how you can do that. It's totally two different way you can able to access a specific controls inside the form group okay now now let's go understand about this part because we have to display the error now we have to go and focus on this error now let's see how this is working now let me click on add you can able to see required is there and we'll check that another one that is called we have to check that required validator is there or not for that reason let me go and check controls has error has error is a function it will take error name which is going to use to check that specific error is it exists or not suppose if you're going to add required if you're going to add a required you can see that if i go and click on add it's going to give me true because required field validator is firing same way if i enter some value and I click on add you can see that it's giving me false right means you can see here in case of this errors and has errors both are interlink error is going to say us is there any error is there or not for a control has error is saying that the given error is exist inside this control or not for that reason guys what we're going to do in this code what will go first we'll check that is there any error or not if you check you write ng if you will know that ng if is you going to check that error is there or not for that reason i have to access the errors attribute right this error attribute for that reason i will write form dot controls of task name dot errors dot errors question mark errors i will explain what is this question mark errors It's saying that it will saying that this task name control is there any error or not if there is an error then display what error is there because for each and every error you have to display the information right let's check for required one required field then we we'll write another code called span you have to show that ng if again ng if ng if this control dot has error required there are two things you have to understand first i am checking that this control has control contains any error or not errors will going to check that the controls contain error or not it is going to give you null if there is no error if, if it is going to give the data if there is error if it's null means you know that there is no error if not null means there is an error again in between that we have to check that what type of error is that what type of error means you know that for this control we have applied two two validation one is required another is max length for required we have to display different uh, different um, message for uh, max length we are going to display different message suppose this is required then we are going to display uh, suppose task name task name is required similar guys for max length what it for max length you know that when you go and enter some value here and click on add you can go that you're getting the key called max length now if there is an error called max length let me copy this code and paste it here instead of required i'll pass the max length because max length is the error name for the maximum length like right? tax name is maximum or tax name is 
मोर देन फाइव कैरेक्टर ओके ओके टैक्स नेम इज टैक्स नेम इज नॉट मोर देन फाइव कैप्स ओके सिंपल वन नाइ गाइज यू कैन सी दैट टास्क नेम इज रिक्वायर्ड एवरी टाइम इट्स फायरिंग टास्क नेम इज रिक्वायर्ड इज एवरी टाइम फायरिंग विल सी दैट व्हाई इट्स फायरिंग ओके विल सी दैट वन टास्क नेम हैज एरर इज रिक्वायर्ड इज एवरी टाइम इट्स फायरिंग बट इफ आई गो एंड चेंज दिस वैल्यू यू कैन सी दैट इज फायरिंग द टास्क नेम इज नॉट मोर देन फाइव कैरेक्टर इफ आई रिमूव दिस वन इट्स गोइंग टू फायर दिस वन and if you go to enter something is going to fire the other one but you can see the error here if i refresh also if nothing i have enter is showing that task name is required let me do something i'll add a color here okay let me call class class called danger or call required let me copy this one and paste it here and go here and define a class called required css class required let me put color equal to red guys look into this the task name is required by default displaying why displaying there is a logic because we are not entering any data okay but the thing is here if i don't enter any data this name should not be display right this dis come this one should not be display Until and unless if I don't change the value, and if I don't remove the value, then only going to display. Otherwise, if a page load, no need to display the task name required. Only if I go and change and revert back, then only it's going to be display task name required. Now the thing is, how we know that someone is enter some value and someone going to remove the value or clear some value? That is the things, right? If you know that someone change the value, then only we able to know that that is required or not. Example, by default I don't want to display the required because by default no one going to display the required, right? Only and only if I enter something and remove the data, then only going to display. Otherwise, if I go and click on the add time add only, that time only is going to display the message until unless it's not going to be display. Now guys. Now how we can do that, guys? Required field validator. Required field validator is a validator which is specially fire all the time if the field doesn't contain the value. Remember, if field doesn't contain any value, that time this event is this validation is going to fire all the times. If there is a value, now it's not going to fire. Okay. Now how this work? When I enter the value. It will go to this. If there is an error, if the error is check that is and has this required field error or not. If not, this going to not don't don't know going to display. This is pretty much about the code. Okay, now, now guys, you can see here. Here I am I am using same control multiple times, right? I mean same controls all these things. Now how I can define one control and using this in this place? Now let's go to that. If you go to this component, you can find the TS file. Let me go and create one property. We have to learn about property. How to define a property? Property, you know that get and set. Let me define a get. Get called suppose task control. Okay, it's called task control. And here I will return this dot form dot controls of task name guys what i'm doing instead of writing the same code same code again and again i have created a property property name to define a property we have to use the get okay get set you already know that in java get is used to define a define a property you know that get is always going to return some value then i have type return return this sort of format control Now task control instead of writing all this line of code all the times I can what I'll do I can replace with the task control. Task control dot error. Task control has error. Task control has error. These are the things come. You see that what I did? Simply I have moved to a new attribute or a new property 
and this property when going to call is going to call this code and this property I am going to call inside this this one right now I hope you will understand this part now guys our issue primary issue is task name is, is required is showing all the times why because anyhow the task is not enter here due to that is firing but this should fire now you can see that this thing we have to know we have to, we have to this this message should be removed then understand how to do that guys as i told if i go and enter some data and if i remove the data that time only i have to display the message otherwise if i go and click the button that time only i have to display the message until unless i don't want to display the message guys understand this part first little bit more we have to understand and let me zoom it zoom one when i enter something means i am going to touch this field right i am going to touch this field i am making this field as a dirty right understand when you type something inside a text box or you change the drop down or doing anything to it control that time two things we are doing we are going to touch it and when you typing you are doing make it dirty dirty means it's you making it change the value now we have to check that this control is a touch or dirty then only we can able to see that then only we able to see the code now let's see that how we know that a control is touched or not guys okay, touch means understand as a user you change the value or not understand as a user you change a value or you change something or not that is called a touch and dirty now let's understand a touch and dirty because this is the most important part you have to understand touch and dirty here now i have to check that this specific control is touch or not suppose i have to remove this control with uh, this dot uh, task control right now let me check this control is dot, uh, touch or dirty let me see console dot log this dot task control dot touch okay touch is used to check that control is touched or not same way if I go and type console dot log this dot task control is dirty dirty means you see that dirty control user has changed the value in the ui understand this part change the value in the ui touch means the true is the control mark as touch let's understand this part two part touch and this one now if i go and click on add you can see that is touch is saying true okay now refresh this part and click on add you can see that this is getting is false why touch is false because i did not touch it if i touch it means if i go in focus that is called a touch if i change the value and click on the add you can see that this both are saying true true why true true because touch i have touch i have dirty dirty means i have changed the values that is called the dirty one okay what is the part guys touch and dirty then same way we will only display the task name if the field is touch or dirty if the field is touch if the field is dirty only then only you can able to see the message otherwise we are not going to see the message can you see that what is touch dirty then it is called dirty then go to here you will write has error and this control is dirty okay then what will do you can see that now it's not displaying if i go enter some value and back the value you can see that displaying task name is required got it task name is required is showing why it's showing because i have changed the value and if i remove this one this condition is getting true means if a field is dirty and then only it's going to be display true other part we have to check dirty is there that is one part done right now thing is if i don't touch anything don't choose anything if i click on add then it should be thrown it should be so an error right this should be so that this is required now guys understand what we can do that if user did not touch this control if the user did not enter any data into control then how programmatically mark this field as dirty and touch understand these things 
if i don't enter any value and click on the add how programmatically i'll make this control as dot t and all these things then only we're going to display the data now what we're going to do if we click on the add button then only we have to make the field as dot t and touch then only this condition going to fire right now how programmatically you want to make a field dot t or touch for that reason let's go to the code in the else part guys this is in valid valid is going to say that false in the else part we have to fire we have to make this control as dirty and we have to make control as touch in such a way that we have to display this message now how to do that dirty and what are you going to do this dot task control task control is the this control dot mark as dirty you mark as dirty it's going to be make the dirty as make the control as dirty let me show that if i go and click on the add here you can see that it's displaying task name is required why because first the valid is false if i go to this else part now i'm making the programmatically mark this field as dirty once the field dirty you know that the control is here is getting true and true 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 won't display the task name is required but it that is the beauty of reactive form everything you can manage using your code guys this is all about our reactive form when you go and enter some value here and if i going to remove i can able to say task name also if i don't enter anything click on the add now it's going to display the task name is required right this is all about our reactive form okay clear now you can do much more exercise here if you go to go and explore this part then you will be able to understand how the reactive form work and understand reactive form is the most important things in the angular because because finally you are going to develop a application and that application is going to play with the forms right your data entity form lot of forms everything going to mark by this form only right now we have implemented the reactive form using this one now let's go and go for a little bit more uh, advanced one the check on check we'll discuss that thing let's go and implement some uh, that multilingual stuff how to enable the multilingual inside our application guys first understand what is multilingual multilingual means by default whatever language you are going to use that is a default language suppose i am going to use here um, english or hindi telugu tamil any language i am going to use or that is our language is here right but but in the program just imagine add is here right add is here for to add the item just imagine in different language telugu or tamil or hindi the add may be any any other things right it may be any other things same as if i going to say that task name is required maybe the task name in english hindi tamil or telugu it will be different right then how we go and add language specific code for this for our application now how we do the multilingual here understand the part here now guys language means it's not going to work dynamically everything is static then you will ask me question if everything static means what does mean by static static means let me go and design this page a little bit more then you will be able to understand the what is the use of static okay now what i'll do guys i'll go to this uh, to do to do up to do up here let me do one thing in between that i'll add a another div okay i'll add another div and inside this div what i'll do i'll put all this div and i'll add another div inside that okay i'll add it here called h4 tag it's called to do simple right it's for to do up now let me write it here another uh, uh, tag called um, suppose div i'll write it here manage your own task suppose this is the description okay understand this way now here what will going to happen this is looks like very ugly right because we are not applying any designing all these things 
before going to multilingual i want to show you how to integrate the bootstrap here okay how to integrate the bootstrap into application we'll let go and change a little bit more uh, ui specific then we'll go and implement the bootstrap then you will be able to know that how the things work now let's go to bootstrap guys if you know don't know bootstrap i let you know bootstrap is a css library which is defined all the predefined css for the application okay means if you are going to use the bootstrap there is a ready-made things are available you just need to remember the class name the css class name then you're going to use it now let's go and use the bootstrap inside our angular application okay now the question is how to use the bootstrap inside the application okay now to use the bootstrap you can see that they are saying this thing npm install bootstrap as i told earlier npm is the node package manager if you remember in bootstrap npm uh, bootstrap is the npm package uh, bootstrap is the class library and you know the npm is stands for install the node install the node package manager into the application you can see that the current version of bootstrap is 5.1.3 this is the stable one now let's go and install this bootstrap inside our application for that reason, what we are going to do, I will stop the build now, as of now for some time, and let go and install, let's go and install that bootstrap one. You know, to install something, if you remember the first, yesterday first up I told that npm install, right? Guys, npm install is a long, long, a long, like this is a long syntax. If you want to make it short, just you simply write npm i npm i is the same as npm install but i am using the npm i what i am going to install i am going to install the bootstrap the same application directory just write bootstrap okay don't write bootstrap now once you type the bootstrap it's going to install the bootstrap Now you will going to ask me a question, okay, where the bootstrap is installed, okay, where this bootstrap is installed and how I can able to see the bootstrap code because this is a code also, right, then do one thing, go to your project folder, means wh wherever you develop the project, go to that project, suppose our training is a folder, inside the to-do app is our application folder, if you open this to-do app, you can see that we have a project here, you can find a folder here that is called node modules, you understand? There is a folder called node modules. If you open this node modules, you can see that whatever packages we are going to install or we are installing inside our application, all are exist inside this. Means if you go to our package.json, okay, if you go to you go to package.json in package.json, whatever dev dependency, all dependency, whatever are there all are exist inside these node modules but it means node modules is a folder which actually contain all the libraries of our package all the package for like all the library content here okay guys as of now we are not going to discuss other things let's go focus on the bootstrap as you know we have recently installed the bootstrap okay in the same way if you go to the node modules files node modules folder you can find that is a folder called bootstrap here right if you open the bootstrap you can find that this is our bootstrap folder okay inside a bootstrap folder this is contained a dist dist means distribution means it's a compiled code dist folder inside the dist you can see that we have a css and js in the css we have a list of bootstrap css is there okay now why i'm talking all these things because we are going to use the bootstrap css inside our application okay now let's go and use this bootstrap inside our application now for that reason we will go and learn about new thing that is called the style.css if you remember initially i told that we have two styles one is global style one is local style guys first understand what is a global style what is a local style global style means if i going to add anything here 
this style is going to apply for all the controls all the pages means suppose if you're going to say that for the sorry we're going to say that for the body my font size will be the 20 pixel let me save it let me run the application guys npm start what i'm saying here i'm saying i'm adding a css here if the body i'm going to set the font size 20 pixel what is the meaning of this syntax is if throughout the application is going to apply this font size 20 pixel okay i'll show you now if i go and open our application if i refresh the page you can see that our application font size got increased right you can see that font size got increased means whatever css you are going to apply here this css is applicable for all of the component okay means this is a global css for your application any global css is going to add you can going to add it here but what is local css you can see that for each and every component for each and every component there is a individual css file is there guys this css file is specific to only this component is not specific to outside the component understand this part style.css is global for all the components but suppose to do add component right so add component css is specific to only this component means just imagine to do add components it's a required here right if i will go and use this required in other components suppose let me use here only class called to do required this would be red right but you can see that it should not be read why it's not read guys because this required class this required class belongs to to do add component means this is called a private css or the local css if you can see that any css belongs to a component that is belongs to this local component local css any css belongs to this right this one is going to belongs to this public one or this is the global one same way guys you can see that in to do component i have added required but required is not defined here right but suppose i want to make the class required then i can copy this class i'll go to style here and i'll add it here required because font size font size suppose sorry not font size color equal to red if we're going to save it you can see that now this is making a red that i told whatever you're going to add inside the style.css is applicable for all the comp control if you're going to add anything to the specific component or specific control that is belong to that control or that specific component only okay now guys bootstrap is the stuff that is going to be used in all the places right i mean bootstrap is not for only one component this is for whole page due to that we are going to import this bootstrap in your style.css got it we're going to import this bootstrap into style.css now how we can go and import that bootstrap inside our application now for that reason we're going to use import okay, okay. going to use import in import we are going to write let me see that it's working or not okay now see that guys this is a syntax which is used to import the bootstrap first understand what i'm writing another import is the is the keyword is available in style sheet which is used to import a file i have to import a file guys this symbol right this symbol till symbol is for this symbol is for node modules path means when i use this node this path is going to the node module folder node modules folder inside that i am going bootstrap folder i am going to bootstrap folder inside bootstrap i have a dist folder 
I am going to dist folder. Inside dist, I have a CSS folder. I am going to the CSS folder. Inside CSS, I have a bootstrap min.css file. I am going to use bootstrap min.css file. Means I am importing that file inside our application using the style sheet. Now you can see that our entire application structure got changed. Right? Now it looks like a little bit different. Now let's go quickly design this page and it should be looks like a little bit more uh, as per our designing. Let me make it a little bit change. Now what we are going to do guys, let me go to first to do component and what we are going to do, I will going to add a div here, a div is a container. If you don't know all these things guys, I know that if people don't able to get bootstrap, just click to bootstrap, go to docs, okay. Click on doc and docs and you can go and read all these things. Because this is self readable, you have to learn these things your own because there is nothing to learn here. You have to just remember in which area what class need to be applied because this is a CSS library. CSS library, you have to remember everything on your own. Okay, now. Now container, let me add another one called div class. I also don't remember all the class of this bootstrap. I also sometimes go and copy the paste, copy from this uh, bootstrap I'm using here. Okay. And row, let me do one thing. I'll go here and I want to do the grid system. For example, the grid, how the grid is, looks like. Let me go and copy these things, guys. Yeah. If I this one and div class call. The second guy, I'm just adding the some class. I'll go to explain later. See this guys, we have a little bit more. I'm going to change all these things. Last, last second. Eh? Now we'll go and focus on this add part. Let's go to add. Guys, this is all of the class. I'm adding a card. I'm getting a card header. Then I'm adding some text. All these things I'm doing here. This is the predefined class is available in the bootstrap. That is self. You have to learn this one. I'm just doing the designing. Okay, let me go to this add part in add. I can use class called dplex. Just a second. For a button, we can use the class called button, button sn, button primary. then we have to use this control class called guys you can see that every time i am using i am remember the class name i am just applying the class and which class name is required in which case okay and you can see that this is this is displaying the as it is error okay now i think pretty much we are added the css i should actually I, my intention was to show you how to use the bootstrap and how to use the class inside the application now guys now let's go and change the label here. Okay. Suppose let me do one thing. Let me go and okay, I don't know about. Okay. Let me go and implement the implement the language file here. Guys, the language file is going to be it's a multilingual. First, we'll go and enable the multilingual inside our application. 
to enable the multilingual we have to install some dependency package the dependency package is translator package okay we have to use a translator package let's go and install first translator package okay now what is the translator package we have to use ngx translator this is the package we are going to use for the application and this is the self one guys this is nothing to do this is the self one this is we are going to use to start the translator because this is already they have written what need to be do in which case okay let me go and install this package okay i'm going to install this package copy this one and i'll paste it and click on this one it's going to install the translator package for our application translator package means to do the translation of the application we are going to use the ngx hyphen translate package remember this one okay translate package now we have to follow what they are telling us to what we need to do okay now before that we have to create a language file first understand how to create a language file okay now actually this code is given everything everything means how to load the file how to use the file lot of thing going to say anything just do one thing i'll go to here and inside the assets at the assets for the assets folder assets folder let me create a folder called i18n i18n means guys nothing else it's a international multilanguage format i18n you can give any folder name it's up to you but let me give i18n then let me create two files one file is en.json means en means it's a english file okay let me create an english file json and same way i going to create suppose another file couple suppose called uh, suppose hindi.json and i'll call tamil or telugu okay telugu dot json let me create okay we will create our own language i'll show only one thing then you people are going to add your own language okay suppose hindi telugu and tamil okay okay why json file i will go to explain later but understand this part then understand what actually we are going to do it here english or telugu or tamil or anything what we are going to do it here now guys we have to first create all the kind of structure here structure here means you know that how json looks like right suppose this is my this is my header right i can see that this is the r section what i'll do i'll create a section called suppose to do example to do or i can say that it's a r section you can give anything up to your uh, up to your uses you can give anything let me give to do inside the to do i have a label called add okay add in this add our, my label is called add a same way what i'll do i'll go to hindi and copy this paste only this add suppose let me go to suppose english to hindi that's example huh? i'll put add here add jode right and let me add here here jode at it the same way i'll copy it i'll go to tamil one and i'll change the language because i get, guys i don't know tamil i'll create the tamil one and it's saying something okay good to i'll put it here good to. i'll show you the example same way telugu i'll put the telugu Jordan Chu and create this file, copy this file and put it here. Okay, it's called Jordan Chu. Okay, same way you can add other things. Means I can only add this add part. You can based on your requirement. Suppose that example requirement means you can put for edit, you can put for delete, you can put for this everything you can make it language it's up to you but i am only focusing this part this one means only this part i am not focusing other part you can see that i have created all the files 
is called English by default is English one EN one Hindi and Tamil and Telugu I have added all these things right now how we can go and display this data inside the application right how can go and display this data inside the application that is our primary stuff now for this one what we'll do first we have to load this language can you understand first we have to load this language if you don't load this language then how we can use that one to loading the language means we are going to load this file for that reason they are saying we have to use the HTTP translator we have to install this package what is it going to do I'll explain it's going to load this translator then what I'll do guys now I'll go and install this package guys these are the instructions they are giving in their packages we have to follow this one there is nothing to do there is nothing to work with anything that's that we are going to follow okay now I hope it's installed right like it's got installed now we have to use that file inside application now now let's go to our app.module file app.module means our app.module.ts okay now here we have to do some configuration for configuration first we have to load the file what file guys we have to load all the files inside this i18 what are the files i18 in we have to first load into memory then only we're going to change it now they are writing the code how we are going to load it let me copy this code nothing else i have to copy this code and put it here okay now i have to install http client for that reason i have to install http client it's saying i have to load the file from assets slash i18n you can give any file name guys any you can give any folder name i'm just giving i18n okay now that's saying after that we have to use translator module here okay we have to use the translator loader guys this is all a self explanatory we are i'm just also using this way i'm going to use translator core then translator loader okay these things now default language for root default language to use default language suppose i am going to use en forget about this then we are going to see all these things later we are going to use default language en now if you go and run this application let's see what happening we are set now we are set okay but the things will be we have to display the text here right the text here means how we are going to display the text here now let's go down 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 here you can see that the things they are saying that we have to use these things what the things they are saying they are saying hello translate param forever param they're saying hello they're saying hello they're using some different 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 structure okay you can see that what they are using languages uppercase lowercase all these things they're saying right means they have some they have some structure they are following but what we are going to use we are going to use this translate pipe we are going to use this translate pipe now let's go and understand how to use this translate pipe now let's focus on our one thing that is called this add one because we are going to focus on the add one right this add one in add we have this button right so this text we want to change to our translator module now here what we're going to add guys i'm going to add some different structure you have to see that here if you open this our json file of this language file let me open english one you can see that to do dot add then i'll go to add to do dot add then i'll use the translator pipe okay translator pipe let me save it let's see anything is displaying or not you can see that it's displaying add and do one thing go to our app model file change the language to hindi i'll show to the and telugu also change to language to hindi you can see that it's displaying jode same way if i go and change to tamil you can see that it's going to display the tamil here if i go to change to telugu 
you can see that it's going to change the telugu here means based on my default language it's going to lower the content here but the only thing you have to change is instead of writing the direct add update delete here you have to use the exact format of what we are going to do just example suppose i make it capital to do and suppose i'll say that add level suppose add level then here i have to add the same thing add to to do dot add level so go and save it you can see that i can able to save the value but you can see that nothing there is something error is happen what error is happen you can remember what error is happen guys you can see our default language is telugu in telugu language you can see that in telugu we don't have to do an add label due to that it's not working means whenever you are changing any label or anything inside application if you are maintaining your three or four any n number of language always remember you have to maintain the same label all the places means everything should be exactly same as it is then only it's going to be work otherwise if any key get mismatch suppose here add label and it here only add then it's not going to work in your program okay got it i can see that we are able to see in telugu same way you can go and change any here okay anything suppose i let me change the hindi here and it's going to display in hindi as a jore right by default we are going to give it's called en english right guys now you will to see now got it guys how we can enable the multi language now you will ask me a question for each and every level do i need to add the um, this translator yes answer is yes every time if you go and change any level anything then you have to use the label means actually when you are making a developer okay when you go to develop the front end application all the labels and everything is not hard coded everything is coming from the configuration file or this language file everything we are going to define here same as suppose i want to define here task name task name here suppose let me give as task name same way guys what i'll do i'll copy this one and i'll go to the telugu and i'll put it here task name and the same way i'll go to the here and add the task name i'll copy this one put it here because this is the work we must have to do this is the work we have to do. there is no other choice we have same way if i go to the uh, this tamil one i'll go and enter this tamil text i'll go to enter tamil text i'll go to change the tamil means every time whatever you are going to change it you have to change everything from the each and every places right same way in the Ekram ka naam now Hindi. Let's say task name. Now you can go that. Okay, task name is Karikram ka naam. Now suppose you want to use this one. Now go to our uh, this one. Which one? That um, to do here. Task instead of the task name, you can add it here like this way. Okay. How, how are you going to add it? Going to go into single call, uh, single quote inside that to do dot task name, and you have to use the pipe called translate pipe. Same one, guys. Copy this one and this one. You have to add it here. Now, when you go save it, this one, and if you go and change the language to suppose, let me change language to Hindi, Tamil, or Telugu. Okay. Now you can see that if I go to change that. If any error, if I click on the add button, it's saying that Karya Kamka name is required. Right? This is the this is the way we can able to do the multilingual. But guys, understand everything is actually need to be dynamic. But I am just adding this one as for a demonstration. I am doing the same thing. Same thing. If I go add the Tamil, uh, you can know that if you click on add, it's going to display some uh, Tamil word and it's required. Right? Same way for Telugu. Okay. If I going to add something and I click it, it's going to display the same thing, right? Now, 
this is the way you can manage your each and every language for your application okay someone asked me question don't have any google API to after different language automatic no understand this thing guys understand google api and a translator api i know that you people are using all are using google translator api from day one right you are adding a website this google translate guys google translator api is you only translate your text okay you're only going to translate your text but it's not going to translate your dynamic text just an example i'll tell you one thing suppose on click of this button okay on delete this is okay on delete you want to show any dynamic text suppose you want to show in telugu can translator is going to do that no program it the dynamic content the dynamic content means this kind of content we cannot change using google translator okay understand this part calling this dynamic content whatever dynamic content you are generating that dynamic content we cannot call using this google translator google translator is only used for change the content who are visible in this site okay in this case just imagine you don't want to change this text to other you want you want to make sure this text always be a english only but in this case google translator also going to translate this text because google translator is going to text anything okay that reason guys it's always very recommended to use your own language own language means own language file that is the most of the just imagine you are uh, your google translator means you are using third party service that is also depend upon your browser right if someone going to don't install a google translator then what you going to use so always be recommended use your own language file and this is the standard you have to follow because in future because google translator is not going to do exact as it is because you know what exact you have to add it here okay in this case just you imagine you want to make sure this is required is always be english and this is your dynamic this may be telugu english hindi or any language then how can do that you cannot do that using the google translator google translator is going to translate entire page but as a developer if you want to partial translate fully translate conditional start, uh, start, um, update or uh, dynamic update the translation then you have to use your own thing this is the way you can go and use the translator guys for that what you need to do i'll send this uh, link i'm going to attach this link in our uh, note that you people able to future go and use this one okay sir one doubt yeah. sir yes yes uh, sir is required is coming in english only right sir so if we change the language then every should everything should come in uh, that language no only, right? let me do one thing what is the meaning i am saying here here like in here you can see that i only apply the translate in this task name i did not apply the translation for each required just example let me go and add a which language currently we have we have uh, telugu right just, just telugu let me in telugu what will do we will going to add support task required now here what will going to do that Suppose we'll go into here. Suppose let me go to Telugu. Our task name is required. I don't know what they are saying, but copy it and paste it here. Now same way, let me copy this one and push it to Hindi and Tamil also. Okay. I'll what I'll do it, guys. I'll change to Hindi. Then Karya Kamka Nam. This one the same. Going to add it here. same thing i'll do in tamil okay this is the text what i'll do i'll go to the tamil one and i'll enter this text and finally go to the english one we're going to add this one called task name is required got it you can see that everything is we have now this text we are going to add it here means full we are going to add it here no need to add each 
means when i'll go and change the language to a second go and change the language to here suppose english but in not english it's so hindi you can see that it's displaying hindi and if you click it it's displaying karaka kanam this this one is displaying right if i going to change it to telugu you can see that it's going to display this way guys what is the meaning of this one means it's up to you what you are going to add translator what you don't don't want to add a translator it's totally up to you it doesn't mean matter whatever you are doing okay suppose in this case in this case you can see that i am adding only the task name as telugu and is not more than five characters is english you can customize your entire translation based on your requirement okay that is up to you no link like okay i want to do this thing this thing no i can able to translate in specific task i can also able to uh, translate in all the all the text it's up to you for that reason whatever you want to whatever you want to make translate make sure that same key that same data should be exist inside your all the language file understand that should be exist on all the language file then only you can use to do dot task name inside to do you have a task name that you can use here you can see that i am using this uh, if i go and refresh this one click on r you can see that only display this is required but previously we have only mark task name and then is required that's the reason i'm saying everything you can make it's up to you how you are going to apply the translation okay got it now now the second part is guys we have to understand between that you can know that one thing we have learned here that is called i have import here http client module and i am doing some http translator loader all this thing doing right now let's go and learn little bit more about the http one because as a developer because you i know that you people are all are backend developer and for a backend developer you must have to know that how to consume that backend api inside this page example suppose i want to access a uh, backend api any get or post or put any api i want to access inside the page guys to enable the http calls http calls means any asynchronous call inside the application in angular you must have to import http client module inside your application inside your module means inside the app module you have to import the http client module inside your application then only you can able to do the http work same as if you don't import reactive forms then you are not able to do the reactive work like exactly same if you want to do any kind of get post put operation inside your application then you have to import http client module okay once you import http client modules let's see how you can use the http client inside your application okay now guys okay, we'll do something extra what we'll do now let's create one file inside this assets let's call suppose uh, tasks example task for our this task only let me create assets the file name is suppose to do dot json understand guys to do dot json means just imagine i am going to create all the uh, to do here and i am going to access this to do inside our co co component inside our control okay that is our motto but we have to imagine this files is our api file this is our api let me do one thing i have to return the data for that i have to return let me go to this uh, this way application Let's imagine, guys. This is our JSON file, and just imagine this is the present inside this one. This is our URL. Just imagine this is our URL. Okay. Now assets. Then this is a post to do 
डॉट जेसन ओके टू डू डॉट जेसन और अदरवाइज इफ आई गो यू कैन गो एनी सपोज फेक एपीआई ओके दिस इज अ फेक एपीआई इफ यू जेनरेट अ फेक एपीआई दिस इज अ फेक एपीआई टूल यू कैन यूज द फेक एपीआई जस्ट एग्जांपल दिस इज अ टू डू यू ऑलरेडी देयर इज अ टू डू आल्सो इफ आई गो एंड यूज दिस वन इट्स गोइंग टू गिव ऑल द टू डूस सी दैट सपोज यू वांट टू कंज्यूम दिस एपीआई इट्स अप टू यू व्हाट एपीआई जस्ट इमेजिन दिस एपीआई इज योर बैकएंड एपीआई means this api is the api whatever you develop using dotnet or java spring boot anything this is your api okay now this api how we can go and use inside our application right now now guys just imagine we have to consume this api or you can create this files also we are going to consume this api let me go and use this api as a api endpoint now how to call this data because we have a API, you have a path, we have a address. Same one, you have a address, we have a. You can see that lot of things there, right? Now, let me consume this one. How to go and call this API, guys? Right? To call this API, we have to use the HTTP client because HTTP client module is used to enable the HTTP HTTP call inside the application. But calling HTTP inside the project, we have to use the HTTP client. For that reason, what will go? We have to import this HTTP client inside our project, like private HTTP or HTTP client. This is the this is the this is called the dependency injection. I have import this HTTP calls inside the application. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to call this HTTP inside our. We are going to consume this API inside our project. Okay. Now we are going to call it. You, you because you are all people know that when you are going to call any api the api contain the method right if any rest api rest api contain the method okay what i'm saying here you, if you are going to go, call any api suppose you all are api developer you know that when calling an api we have to specify the type method http method it may be get it may be post it may be put delete anything whatever you know that options whatever the methods you know all that things we have to know we have to import inside our application right means http method depends upon how we are going to call the data okay same way now what i going to do i want to consume this api and you know that if anything going to access via url directly it's a method type is get all of you know this is a get type right now let's go consume this api in postman We'll first see that what record is coming, and then only we'll go and use this one. Okay, now let me open the Postman. This is our URL, guys. This is our URL endpoint. We'll open the Postman. Let's see how this is work. You can see that directly we can able to access the data, but we'll see that this data is able to access by Postman or not. i hope you all people know that postman how the postman is used and how you are requiring because you all are developers now let me click on here okay now we have to give, give the json and we have to pass the method as post sorry pass the method as get when i click on first click on the send now you can see that it's going to send and give the data you can see that you can see here result guys it's giving me all this data right now this is my endpoint my method is get and after calling the get i am getting all this data right now now we have to do how we can go and get the same type of operation using our application means using the our dot net sorry using this um, uh, angular how we can consume that api which api this get api inside our application now guys suppose let me add a function called uh, suppose load remote to do just example na huh? just load remote to do means it's going to load from the remote to load the remote i'll this dot http you know http is instance of http client dot get guys what is get because my this function is a get one 
because I'm calling cat. If I go and put as post, it, it, it may be throwing an error. It's throwing an error, right? You cannot do a post here because it's it's a get only. Now it's a get. Now for that reason, I have to put the get here. Now first, first parameter is what is the path? What is the path of this where we want to get the data? Then I am using the data is this one, right? This is the path. Right? After the data is how you know the data received, then we have to subscribe. I will explain the subscribe letter. Subscribe. Then whatever data will come, that will go and put it console.log result. Now call this function inside the this dot load remote to do. Okay. Now guys, let's go and understand what is happening. You can see here, I can able to see the logs here. I can able to see the three data, right? Created on all these things. Now let's understand this part first. You know that HTTP is used to give the HTTP calls. Now I am going to do the HTTP one that is called the get one. And so the get, we are going to call the data. Suppose you want to do the post, the same one guys, this dot HTTP dot post, sorry, dot HTTP. HTTP is the instance of HTTP client. You can give any name. HTTP dot post. Inside post, you have to pass the parameter and you have to pass the body. You know that post contains the payload, the body you have to pass. Okay. Same way, if you want to do the, suppose you want to do the, uh, that is called put and delete, you can also do the HTTP dot delete or HTTP dot put. It's up to you what you are using. But, if you are using any HTTP methods, you have to make sure that you have to pass the endpoint or endpoint or the API URL. Now, in this case, I am passing our our to do one. Okay, we are passing our to do one. Now, this to do we are getting here. Right? Now, the thing of what is subscribe we are doing here. Okay, subscribe means understand. <clears throat> understand the things. When I am calling this API, that time you know that it will take time to load. Okay. Yes, yes, Suraj is saying that we can we can also use Thunder of VS Code. Yes, yes, yes. You can use the uh, different extension of VS Code where you can also do the rest case, rest one. But I am using that uh, this one, the Postman, because I hope you people mostly are using the Postman for your API testing. Due to that, I am using this one. Okay. Now, guys, understand this part one, then only you able to understand the actual what is happening. Suppose you know that when you are coding any API, what you are doing, you are taking a request and processing the request. Suppose is there a database call, then you are going to database execute the query, get the result, then we're going to respond back to the user. Can you understand, in this case, it may be taken, it may be took one second, fraction of seconds, or any milliseconds. We don't know, right? But just imagine one query will take suppose two seconds or five seconds. And you know that JavaScript is going to compile line by line. Every program is going to compile line by line. Means if I am this line of code, I'll go to next line, next line, next line, go. Next line, next line, code. In this case, I am not going to wait until this res this service, the, this API is going to give me the response. Understand this part? The application is not going to wait until this API is going to give the response. It will go to execute, it will forget. It will go and do the next work. When my API is going to give me the response, then only again compiler comes to here. How this is happening? How all this is happening? That is happening the help of subscribe. What is guys subscribe? If you understand subscribe, you all know you are watching YouTube, right? In YouTube, there is a subscribe button. If you subscribe any channel or you subscribe any of the uh, any of the YouTube channel, if that channel is going to upload any video or anything, that time you get notified, right? Forget about that bell icon. Just remember. If we are going to subscribe any channel, that time if that channel is going to upload any video or anything, that time we are going to notify, right? Guys, that same thing happening in this HTTP. 
means you are subscribed to this endpoint means i am calling to this endpoint when this endpoint or when this api got successfully executed then only i will get notify that is the use of subscription means you have subscribed to this url when this url getting the guys here no one going to upload the video the here the video is the data right when i am calling this api when this api is going to be successfully execute and get the response that time only subscribe is going to send the value that is what i'm saying i am subscribing to this get guys subscribing get means what i'm subscribing i'm subscribing this url only but the method of this url is get in this case it will take some time to get the data in between that compiler is not going to wait it's going to subscribe and it's maintaining a different thread when the data is successfully received by this get that time it's going to give you the result that is the use called a subscription model if you remember the if you remember the um, youtube one you can able to understand this part right means in youtube we are doing subscribe one channel same thing the channel is your api understand this part channel is your api or your endpoint now when channel uploading the data that time you get notify same way guys when your api give the response to you that time you get notify that is the use of a subscription again i tell you one thing let me consume this api okay larger api i'll paste it here to see this guys you can see that you got it after some time it displays the result why because it will going to check up to when it's going to load then only it's going to display the result that's the reason guys we have to do the subscription model subscribe is used to subscribe the data when the data is available or data is response from the server that is a same as a subscription model okay now guys this is all about our this uh, angular all these things but guys i know that in two days to cover end to end of angular in depth is not possible all of you know that but whatever task i have completed here that is enough to start the angular because this is the preliminary how because yesterday we have spent much more time on component because that is the most part you have to understand you can see that our entire application contain lot of thing like add update delete all these things we are doing but in real in real programming you all this add right whatever add you are doing all this add actually going to happen in your server server means suppose you are developing dotnet api or java api or node.js api that all are things are happening in the back background means in your back end but as of now i have store the data in local storage to show you all these things okay now now the final part is the deployment okay guys after deployment i'll if you get time we'll go to focus on the unit test case okay now let's go for um, the deployment part how to deploy the application that is the most vital part right ranjan, Be- ranjan i yeah, yeah. skip one yeah. thing i skip one thing uh, can you go back on a console this one uh, it's a curly braces 200 uh, i don't know how to come here this thing okay okay no, no. what i'm saying here like previously we are calling this api right and this API getting this only three data. Now instead yes. of calling this API, I am calling this this placeholder API, and this placeholder API contain two hundred of data. And what I okay. did, guys, I am calling instead of that one, I am calling this API. Now it's okay, going to be the here. Okay. Yeah, that is here yeah. due to that is displaying two hundred record here. Okay. Okay. I and think that here, is three. It is there only, but uh, I uh, check that it is 200 plus data. So that I am confused how the uh, API is giving yeah. more than three yeah. data. Yes, 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 yes. It's 200. This is the, that this API I'm going to call. I'm going to send guys do one thing. This is the free sites for JSON placeholder. If you don't have API, if you don't have anything, just go and play with this data. I'm going to send this one in. I'm going to add this one into into our. Uh, it may file then you people are able to understand get and play with this okay now 
Now guys, final part, push this code into Git and do a production build. We'll see how it's going to work. Okay, guys, Docker enable is one of the part I'll show you, but publishing site into Docker will require a at least a paid service, but I'll try to do using the uh, Heroku, but if not possible, I'll do, I'll going to do using the uh, that is called um, Angular Firebase. Okay, but anyhow, I'm going to host it site. Okay, let's see. Now let's go and do for the uh, this is called um, what we're going to do. We are going to publish the code. Let me I check it. That uh, now let's go for GitHub part. Okay, now understand how this GitHub is work and we'll push our code to GitHub. You know that GitHub is giving a free space to host our code. Means suppose you are developing any open source project or you are doing some any research work or anything you are doing, you can able to track or you, you can able to push your code into the GitHub, right? The same way guys, I have a GitHub account because it's my personal account. I'm a creating organization called Sino Technologies and inside this i just want to create a repo okay let me create a repo first understand what is a repo i know you people already know all this thing but let me this is my responsibility i will let you know what is a repo repo means it's a code folder same like inside our project we have a to do app right to do app to do is a folder to do app is a folder this is the folder we are storing all our code a same way in the repo means it's a repository where you're going to store your project okay now let's me create one repo let me create a repo i have to create, create new repo what i'll go and I'm going to give the repo name to give the repo name always remember the repo name should be unique for the organization let me give a, a, a repo name is angular uh work sub july example guys this is the angular works of july this is the our repo name means all our code is going to store here otherwise you can give any name it's up to you i'm giving hyphen underscore it's up to you but don't give space okay this is the thing and description anything not it's saying that it's public or private can you understand what is a public and private public means anyone in this internet they can able to see this code private means it's only for us who has I'll going to give the access then they are going to access as of now I'm going to make it private because 22 because why I'm going to make it private because only our students is going to display the things otherwise if you are making any project as a suppose open source then make always as a public but I will make as private guys only github is not a site there is a GitLab, lot of azure devops lot of uh, like bitbucket n number of sites are available who are giving the same kind of service but github we mostly use because this is a because day one it's a free now if you go other parts don't do anything simply go and create repo okay i'm going to create repo no guys you can create n number of private repo up to you let's uh, like suraj is asking yeah suraj is asking that we have to pay any uh, amount for the github to pay something no now github after github merge with this uh, uh, what called the microsoft now they have created all the things as free free means what are the free i'll tell you only the code is free but deployment build all are thing the thing are the paid one but you can create a private repo it's not cost it's totally free of cost now now let's see what is saying because we have just created a blank repo repo name is angular wax sub july 2020 now guys this is my repo name i need to push this code from my local to here right now you can see here now one thing is saying that how we are doing are you going to create a new project or you want to push your existing project into your application got it guys what is saying are you going to create a new project or you are going to exist push your existing code to our project because we already have developed our project means we have existing project and we have to follow this command now first understand this first time what they are saying
रंजन इसका थोड़ा सा फोन साइज बढ़ा सकते हैं आप क्या Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I, I'll do that. Well, I don't have time to. Okay, no issue. The recording will be available long time. No issue that one. The, the Telegram channel also there. If anyone any issue anything, just you want to ask me. Okay. Okay. Let's first complete this one and we'll go for spend half an hour for question and answer. Okay. Now, guys, you can, now it's good, right? You can able to see my font, right? Now, we'll see. We will see that this is a push an existing repository from the command line. Suppose, guys, if you are going to start from scratch, then we will go for this command. But always remember, no one is going to follow this one because first you are going to create the application, then only going to push the code, right? No one is going to first create the application from here. Now, all the time, this push an existing repository is a requirement. First, understand this part, this line, then you have understand git is the command guys if you don't know git is how work list if you don't enable the git first go and install the git in a local how to install go git then first git and first go to git hyphen scm okay first go and install the download and install this one this is the primary you have to do because before operating all the git because if you are going to do node.js operation you have to install node.js right same to same if you want to enable the git then first do one thing first go and install this git scm into our machine it may be any machine windows or mac or anything whatever you have you are going to install the git cm scm into your machine you have to just click on download for window and you go and process the basic step of the downloading okay the basic step of installation that is the basic one first you have to install this one once you install this one then this git command is available on your machine on your machine okay now first understand this part what is saying they are saying git remote add guys now our code is in local understand the link now the codes in a local right now this code needs to be pushed from here to this git right now for that reason we have to link that this is our path for that reason saying that git remote add means i am putting git remote means the remote address i need to add origin this is my address means this is my git address now let's go copy this one and open our command prompt let me stop it guys as of now and paste it now this git is now successfully done right now second one grid branch a main i'll tell you what is the meaning of this one okay i have changed by default the branch name of the master but this main branch is supported by the uh, github due to that i have changed the branch to main branch now what i'll do i'll going to push the code push go to main branch then what i'll do i'll create here and push the code to main branch okay now you can see that it's saying that fatal error this is not found okay why it's not found let me check okay because it's not found because i have to first login okay due to this is login i have to login so git login let's see uh, Guys, I'm going to stop. I'm going to put some credentials. Just wait for some time, okay? Because there is some credentials issue. I'll fix it, the credential, and go back to you and tell you what I'm doing, okay? Just a second. Let's see. Actually, that is my issue. Uh, actually, in my system, I'm doing lot of for different different accounts. Due to that, it's happened, okay? Now, let me tell you what actually the problem was there. Why it's saying that Git is not found, right? Remote is saying that issue. I tell you. Just imagine. Uh, they are saying that this is my git address right uh, if you remember my git address if you know that this is our git address right http um, github.com synotech this is our git address remember this part this is your git address and if i go and open this git address now you can see that it's opening perfectly there's no issue but if i go for incognito window means new window and if i press it here you can see that it's showing that 404 why it's saying there is a reason guys understand this part 
this synotech is exist inside my account understand this part because i have this organization i have created n number of organization here okay i have created n number of organization here and in this organization i have added organization that is called the synotech now this synotech is owned by me it's not a github account due to that when i'm sorry when i'm going to open the this url in another tab it's going to throw me an error but same url if i'm going to open in my credentials means when i log, log in it's going to show the error it is going to data the, the reason is because this one guys this one this one is belongs to my account my account name is partharanjan this is my account okay this is my account name partharanjan in this partharanjan user then this is my github option because this synotech it belongs to my account due to that guys this is happening that way for the reason what i did i let you know if you open your application guys if you open your application where you initialize the git there is a git folder which is by default is hide hidden means if you go you can see that it's a hidden one i'll show you these are, these are the actually internal stuff but let you know that by default is hidden what are you going to do if you open the show and go to hidden items you can able to see the git in git you can find the files called config if you open the config one okay let me open this config one inside the this notepad you can see that my origin is this one Partharanjan are there at GitHub something because this Sinutech one is belongs to this account. In going further, you will say that okay, this will problem. No, this is not problem because I am creating organization that completely belongs to me. This organization belongs to my account. Due to that, this is happening. Okay, that is the issue. Now you can see that actually I tried due to that something is happened. Some code is got pushed here. Forget about that. Now, now guys, see one thing. We have, if you see VS Code, you can find that in VS Code, we have 35 files displaying here, right? What is this 35 files? If you go here, if you click it here, you can find that it's saying that we have 35 files we have changed. 35 files we have changed in our code. In this case, what will go? We have to commit this code. Guys, first understand what is commit. Commit means whatever changes you will do into your page that thing you are going to commit it suppose i want to commit that suppose uh, completed the project okay we click on commit you're going to ask you can say yes once you see an yes now it's commit you can see that it's saying that sync changes means i have committed now i have to push this code to server but when we see that in my server there is no commit as it is but when I'll go and click on this one, sync changes, click on there. Okay. You can see that now whatever changes I did in local, that commit is going to push into the server. Let me check that one. We'll see it over for some time. Okay. Now it's going to sync to the server. Now if you go and refresh here, you can able to see that it's saying that now it's got committed 41 seconds ago. I can see that all my code, you can see guys, readme file is there. See that all our readme file is there. Whatever readme file we're going to add, all our readme file is there. Everything is there. SRC folder is there. Assets is there. Everything code is there. Now the question, okay, I have committed. Now I am going to change any file. Suppose what I'll do, I am going to create a Docker file. Just example, I'm going to create a Docker file. Now what I'm going to do, I'll create a, create a click here and give that docker okay i'm going to give docker sorry it's not docker yeah i'm going to give docker file it's extension just a second guys i thought it's not extension of docker files
docker file sorry this is the docker file now in docker file i have to add the docker configuration for the vs code for that reason actually i have uh, copied the code i have because this is a long code i have then i have copied the code then i have to paste it here now this is the docker file i will explain this docker file later but just imagine i have added docker file now this file i have to delete it because already this file is there i don't want i don't delete it now you can see that if you go to the two if you go to two you can see that it's saying that this is added u means it's on track always remember on track means it's an added file now if you see the d means it's a deleted file means i have deleted the file i have added this file now i want to push this file then guys understand every time you push any code to the server you have to add the comment what comment let me know it suppose let's suppose docker file added you can commit yes after commit you click on this sync or you can click it here up to you you can click it here also you can click it here. you can click in sync i can see that it's going to push into the server just a second guys Now you can see that after if I go refresh the page, you can see that it's going to say that I have committed. Yeah, sync. If I go refresh, you can able to see that I have committed something. That Docker Docker file. If you're going to click on Docker file added, you can see that what are the changes I have did that is always displaying here. Right? This is the way we can able to commit the code. Now the question is how you people able to access this one, guys. To access this one, you must have to give me your GitHub ID. If anyone GitHub ID, please paste this GitHub ID in the chat. I am going to add the people inside this inside this uh, project. I am going to give the permission to this project. Anyone the GitHub ID? Give me. Okay, someone send me the GitHub ID. Suraj given me the GitHub ID. Suraj, okay, just a second. Okay, Suraj is added, and I'm going to add Suraj also. Nidhi also sent. Any other people who has GitHub ID, please create this GitHub ID. Any other? Only three people. Any other have GitHub ID? If you don't have a GitHub ID, don't worry. You can send the GitHub ID in the Telegram channel. I definitely going to add it to into, into our year. Okay. Now suppose now you want to clone this one. Okay, you want to clone this one. You can simply go git clone. You can you can simply go to here. Once you have access, you can go and add to to go in code and clone. Clone it or you can download this code. It's up to you how we're going to do that. Okay. Now if anyone facing any problem to download the code or anything, please let me know. I'll going to help you. Okay. I think Nidhi, you will get this uh, URL in your invitation mail. You are going to. Okay, guys, I'm sending the URL in GitHub. I think if you don't have access, you are getting 404. Okay. If you don't have access, you will get 404 definitely. If you have access, then only you are able to get it. Yes. Yeah, Nidhi, you, did, you have to accept the invitation. I'll see who are the people who have accepted the invitation. Let me see. Team. you can see all are pending invite you have to up you have to approve that one to get the um, approval once i've sent you i've sent this one you have to uh, approve then only you'll be able to see the code otherwise you'll get 404 now yeah suresh is approved and uh, this uh, Suraj and Nidhi need to be approved. Any other people will be there, please send me. Okay. Now, guys, we have 
mostly complete this part now let's go for production one how to do the production build how to work on that now guys it's simple one to be to give a production build simply go and write the code that is called ng build hyphen hyphen prod ng build hyphen hyphen prod is a syntax which is used to give a production build for the application okay now that's someone send a message perfect suraj then you can able to see now the repo if you want to download you can do anything you can do with that one okay please other people please give your github id if you don't create github id please create one github id it is very simple if you don't know how to create i'll show you just go to sign up okay and enter your username is going to ask you enter your name and enter your mail id that's all the account created okay your email id you have to enter once you enter your mail id just click on continue it's going to ask your username whatever username and give give it then you click on it's going to send one password confirmation then that's all then send me that username or mail id to me i'll going to add into the account okay now simple one okay it's bharat okay let the build is going on we are going to add we are going to add the people going to add the bharat now for the first one right yes right for you sir all right thank you so guys ng build prod is used to do the production build let me add it this in a comment ng build prod ng build prod is used to do the production build guys let's when going to run it let me understand between our docker file you guys know that what is docker i don't want to explain the definition of a docker but for the time being you let understand docker is used to like create a package and ship the package no need to install and dependency in the server and this angular application is going to run top of the nginx server due to that what are going to do we are going to get the node js latest and we are getting the working directory the copy the directory then do the npm install then do the npm build then get the nginx server copy the file this we need to change the application name is to do app right to do app so to copy this to do app to nginx html folder that's all then gone this docker file is very simple it, not simple means we have to enable dockerization we have to add this docker file that's all okay single also going to send me that one let me add this to add to you to the code repo please okay now this is all our docker one you can see this one this is not about this is the standard code for the docker there is no nothing to do in here it's all our docker standard code now guys let's see the part what we are going to left last time you can see that we have did our production build if you do the production build you have to see that then we have to use the here the concept called if you see that after production build you can see that there is a folder is created it is called dist folder okay is created dist folder okay docker you don't know okay 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 nidhi i'll going to explain docker later okay after some time okay you can see that after you put this ng prod build you can see that this prod one okay this prod one going to create a package for us for the package means you know that we are writing some code if the same code we going to ship it anyone going to copy that code right the same way when you are writing code dot net or java we are getting compiled we are getting jar file or getting a dll file same as where you are going to create the application in angular we have to compile this application into such a way that no one going to read the code that's the reason we are going to do the production build 
production build is going to compile or the compressed application such a way that no one is going to do the reverse engineering. After do the build, you can see that we have a dist folder. Okay. Inside dist folder, we have a to do app. Okay. It is a to do app. Inside to do app, if you go and reveal in the file explorer, you can see that inside to do app, dist folder to do app, you can able to see that we have a list of files available. Some files are available. If you go and click on index.html, it's running, it's not going to run anything. That is fine. But you can see that this is our compiled version of our code. It doesn't contain anything. It's only contain what? It's only contain our some compiled file. You able to don't know what the code written there. If I open this file, okay. If I open this file, then you can see that something is written. Okay, okay. If I go and open this file, you will to see that this file is nothing is there. It's not opening, guys. One second. Open this file in Notepad. You can see that whatever they are written, we don't know what they are. They are totally come change entire code structure. No one able to find out what the code is written. That is the use of the compilation. After compile, what we are going to do? We are going to push this code into server and server is going to give the data. We are going to run the application. Okay. Now, before going to push the data, I let you know that Nidhi is asked like she don't know about Docker. Guys, let me tell you Docker. Okay. <laughs> I know that. Let me <clears throat> do one thing. Let me add some one i'll spend some time just second guys okay okay suraj is asking in this code if you go to this code you can find that here no node module file is created right node modules if you see our code also in in our code you will find that we have node modules file but in our code there is no model node model file Let's guys understand why this node modules file is not there. If I'll go and check this node modules file size, just imagine how much size this is. Just imagine. Means it's going to increase. It may be one G, it's maybe 100 MB, 200 MB. I don't know about that one. Okay, let me increase. Guys, what this node modules file, what this node modules file uh, contain, this is content all the library, right? But this library is depend upon on your npm when you are going to download the code open the code and only enter one command that is called npm install after you download the code into your machine just type npm install now this npm install is going to install all the node package onto your local machine all i remember the library is not going to push into server. Library is always going to store into your local. But to install the local, what you are going to do, you have to type, you have to open your project folder. Okay. Project folder. And after in this project folder, what will do? Type npm install. And this command, okay, this command is install, <coughs> install all the node modules. inside the project because node modules is always a heavier one you can see that 250 mb no one is going to store 250 mb library because library is free one right you are not going to use any cost any library due to that due to the library size is high we have ignored this file now we'll ask question how i ignore this file node modules guys let's go to i told earlier i have go to the git ignore file when you going to learn github that git ignore file it's a file which is used to it's you have to write the code which things you don't want to push when you're going to commit the code in server means what are the files you should ignore which files you don't want to push it you can see here i have written here node modules means you can write node modules here the node modules file is not going to be pushed into server same way i'm writing dist folder means whatever this folder file is going to be created is not going to push means git ignore i think from name or already understand what is the user git ignore i am ignoring the these files and folder 
which is going to be push to the server when you're going to commit the code that's the reason i am removing the node modules but without node modules your application not going to work due to that what you will do in your local after you get the project folder just install npm install if you are downloading the code if you are not downloading code and you getting from scratch then that is okay but if you are downloading the code and you, you are going to use it just install npm install right now now let's go to docker first a little bit then we'll go host the application and go for question and answer right now guys let me understand docker why this docker is required i let you know okay. I, I let you know what docker required just imagine you are developing the java application and someone of you developing dotnet application and suppose i am developing the angular application to run the java application what you require suppose you want to host the application hosting you know right the deployment of application no you have to require a server where you want to do and deploy the application guys when suppose you want to de deploy java or dotnet application you require java runtime or dotnet you require a .NET framework or you suppose you have a dotnet core you require dotnet core core one right means suppose you are a windows server or you have a linux server and you want to run the application what you're going to do we are going to install the .NET mono for the .NET uh, for c sharp you're going to install .NET mono for java you are going to install java jdk into your machine then only you are able to run your application guys understand the problem now you know that for different different server different different configuration just imagine i'm giving windows server example you know windows server you want to install .NET core then you have to install any uh, C++ library, lot of things you have to do. You people already know that what are the different challenges happening when you're going to install the software in different different machine. To overcome that issue, then what developer think, let's get one packaging module. What the packaging module, if you know the VM machine, virtual machine, you know that VM is also running top of your OS. Now, what happening? VM also a machine is also going to create a platform. Lot of things required. It also requires software to install. Then only you're able to run the application. Now, Docker is a one of the technique. Okay, you can see that what it's doing. It's going shipping the application. Means to run the application, you no need to install any third party application, third party library into your machine. Which machine? Where you are going to install the application? Example. Suppose I have a Java application and that Java application I want to that Java application I want to host into a server. Now what I'm going to do? I have to go and install the Java inside this machine. Now instead of doing that, what I'll create, I will create a component. Okay. I'll, I'll draw something. Okay. Understand the basic way. The basic one is I have a machine. Okay and you want to this machine is suppose windows sorry this is a windows machine and here you want to install a java application then you have to first install the jdk java development kit right and then you are going to be able to install the java application same way guys in this project suppose you are going to install .NET, then you go install .NET framework then only you can able to push the .NET application, right? Now, the problem is in this server, you are installing all these third party software to run your application. Now, same way, suppose you want to run the Postgres. Suppose you want to run a Postgres database. Then again, you have to install the Postgres here. Then you'll be able to add it. Suppose you want to add a RabbitMQ or you want to add a Kafka or add any, suppose any kind of Redis. Then what will do? You have to install all the software in your server, right? Suppose one server, you have one server. In this server, you want to install multiple applications, multiple type of application. One is Java, one is C Sharp, one is Java, one is .NET, one is suppose Postgres, one is suppose your um, RabbitMQ, another one is Apache Kafka, another one is Redis Cache. Lot of things will uh, install. Just imagine what about the system. Then some of these going to be compatible, some is not going to be compatible. You need to update the windows, you have to update something, then a lot of things you know you have to do, right? Now, what happening? You don't require this one. You don't require this one. What are you going to do? Let's create a machine. You have a same machine. 
let's take a windows or linux or linux okay now what i'll do i'll create a small small part here now all the parts are isolated with the isolated with the os because everything is installed top of the os but here i am making everything outside the os and inside this 1111 bucket because this is my dotnet application i will install dotnet core this way postgres i will install postgres this is my java i will discuss i will install jdk this is my redis i will install redis now what happened guys in this case just one thing Okay, what happened guys in this case, in this case what will happen, the problem is, in this case, if this is a .NET, I don't need to install .NET in this machine. If suppose Java, I don't need to install the Java in this machine. If I require Postgres, I don't require to install the Postgres in the machine. This is my whole package. This is my whole package. And this package totally isolated from each and everyone there is no link with java to dot net dot net to postgres postgres to redis everything is isolated this isolated stuff is called the now it's calling a docker docker means it's a shipping management you have to create a package and deploy that package into your machine that machine is not not required anything to deploy it means i require dot net here i don't need to dot net to install I require Java here, no need to Java. Java dot and everything is packaged in between that. That's the reason, guys. We are going to create the Docker files, and that Docker files is going to install the Nginx. You, if you don't know Nginx, I tell you that Nginx is the same as server as IS or Apache. Nginx is a server. I am going to create a Nginx server inside the Docker, and in between that, inside that, I am going to run the application. Okay. This is the way that is the use of Docker. Now, what the use of Docker? Then, what is the benefit of Docker? Docker, the benefit of Docker that I can easily allocate memory to the particular Docker node. Actually, this is a totally different stuff, DevOps stuff. But I let you know that when you're getting a Docker, suppose I want to say that my this Docker size will be two GB. Now, later, so I want to change to eight GB. This Docker I don't want to change. Then I can allocate. Each and every Docker different, 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 different memory. That is called the different structure will be there. Kubernetes will be there. Docker node also there. The lot of DevOps stuff is there. That is the part of this Docker. But as of now, as a developer, how we can enable the Dockerization for a project? Clear? Got it? Now, now guys, last part of our of our this workshop is the deployment. Now, guys. I need to deploy this project into a somewhere that you people able to access this site. Now, guys, for that we are going to use this Firebase. I know that if people have heard this Firebase or don't heard, I going to explain all these things. But before that, please do me a favor. I just want to need your honest feedback uh, for the, this training. Whatever you feel in which area I need to improve, which area I need to like uh, is okay. All these things. Please go and write the feedback for that. Okay. Please, if anyone don't write, please, uh, please spend some time write the review. Meanwhile, I'm going to actually through saying that uh, we need to implement it Docker into the Heroku. Okay. Heroku or log GitHub page. Let me tell you guys. If you people don't know about what is Heroku and GitHub, I let you tell you. Let me give you the introduction about Heroku and uh, GitHub, guys. First, we will understand about the GitHub page. Okay, then only we will go understand Heroku. Right? GitHub page is suppose just example. You are developing one tool, a library. Now the GitHub page is used to create a manual for that. Just example, Bootstrap and all this kind of um, all this kind of like. Uh, the pages that build in github page suppose in future you are creating one library and that library suppose you want to make the documentation in this case you can use the github page and one bad thing about github page is it's a totally static page 
there is nothing you can do dynamic it's totally normal html and css page and this is also contain some normal html css syntax that that's all but in github pages also good for when you're going to write your when you're going to write any uh, like like the instruction how to use a library that kind of page then you can prefer the github page now this is not useful for us because our code is comp how to compile then compile this code and push the code now let's go understand about the heroku and what is heroku if you don't if you know that uh, if you heard about digital ocean if you learn about the Bursel, if you learn if you heard about heroku if you don't know heroku that is fine aws and this gcp google cloud computing and azure devops all are belongs to one family they are going to give us the cloud computing means they are giving us the instance uses and instance we are going to do that okay now heroku why popular because heroku also giving some free space to for students as well as a developer who want to run their pilot project okay i'll tell you what is pilot project. suppose i want to develop a application and that application is just a poc and it's just a poc for showing someone why i will go and consume the uh, like I will go and consume this uh, new, I will purchase a new server. Again, the new server, I want to pay something, right? Instead of doing that, what I can, I can go that, I can go to Heroku. Let me log out guys from here. I'll go to this, I log out from as of now. Okay. Now I'll show one, what is the Heroku is giving us by default. If you go to Heroku site, Heroku.com, Heroku.com, then you can see that that is the pricing is there. What is pricing? It's for all developers. If you want to do some POC, lot of things, you can do that. You can see that it's a zero one. Free means that is a free they are giving. The free is for this one, for free and hobby projects. So if you're creating an open source project or creating any kind of POC project, then this is the perfect one. You can select this one. This is the free one. And it's giving 5 to 11 MB RAM. And you can do whatever you can do inside this Heroku. And suppose you want to create a Heroku application, then go and click sign up. You know the sign up process. Let's see, go to sign up and uh, um, fill the basic details, and it's going to then do it. Guys, I already have account in Heroku. Then I'll go to log into Heroku one. Okay. Suppose Heroku now we are going to create a new application. We are going to deploy the application, whatever Angular application develop here, right? This application is going to deploy into Heroku. Now we we'll create a new here. I have just created some dummy app. Forgot about that one. Create a new app. Create new app. Get a new app. Now you have to give the app name. Suppose let me give a suppose Angular Workshop. Not available. Suppose it's available. Angular Workshop 2020. Or let me give a good name. Angular My Angular Workshop. I'm giving this name, but this name should be unique. Okay. Now the choose region, which region you want to store your data. Guys, it's not giving the Indian location because it's totally out of sight. Uh, it is a out of out of India, like they are focusing that part. This is a, uh, this, um, this, uh, you have to choose United States or you can Europe. Well, let me choose the United States. United States and create app. Now guys, it's going to create the app for us. Okay, now. There is a lot of things you can do using the Heroku. You can direct deploy, you can direct connect with your GitHub. You can do that. Otherwise, you can direct uh, using the Heroku command. You can do that. You can do a lot of things. But as of now, we'll go and use the Heroku command. To use the Heroku command inside your application, means inside your local, you have to first download the Heroku CLI. Let me click it and click download Heroku CLI. The Heroku CLI is the command line interface which is used to which is used for the do any kind of command line interface for Heroku. Let me download for 64 bit installer because this is I'm not doing in this machine is the first time. Okay. Now back to there. Now I have Heroku, right? Now and let me install this one first. Guys, this is totally additional. That is no link with Angular. First, I'm showing you how to install, how to use the Heroku inside your application. That's all. Okay. Sir, one quick question. It is a server. Yes, yeah, Heroku it's a hosting server. Okay. 
From mm -hmm. this we are get, uh, have a send function also, send mail function and the port number they are providing. Where? Uh, from Hiraku, they are providing the uh, first, uh, mail send function and the uh, port number of uh, when we host the uh, Angular's website here. Yeah, I, I'll show you here. Let me first install the Heroku. Before it, let us install, we'll go and discuss about all these tabs. Okay. Now, actually, I mostly work on the AWS and Azure. We are less use this one, but I let you know because I, I deploy a lot of application in this Heroku. We'll explain this one. Let's go to setting. If you go to setting, you can find that this is our This is our URL for the application. Okay, I'm just searching this one. This is our URL for the application. My Angular Workshop dot Hero dot app. If you click it, this one, you can see that it's saying the welcome to new app. There's nothing is there. Okay, there's nothing is there inside this one. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to install our application inside this Hero. Okay. Now we'll see how it's going to work. Okay. Now, guys, close it. Now, Heroku is installed in local. What they are saying, if you go to overview, deploy, it's going to say that Heroku, then we have a Heroku login. Once you do the Heroku login, then we can do a lot of things. Okay, forget about that. But we have to see that how to deploy the this Angular application into Heroku. That is the main part, right? Now, guys, I personally never did the Heroku application I never did the deployment of the uh, Angular application in Heroku because it's never required for me. I mostly use the Firebase or we are doing in the Docker instance of the AWS or Azure pipelines. Okay. I'll see the any help document for that to install the Angular into the uh, uh, Heroku. Okay. Let me see that. Yeah. Sir, uh, I cloned the application, the Angular, but. Uh... Uh -huh. When I add the task, it's not adding. And it is run the, uh, running application, whether it is working. Sorry, sorry, what happening? Yeah, I cloned the source code and set up mm -hmm. the uh, visual code. Uh, mm -hmm. When I add the application, it's not running. I mean, it's not uh, adding the task. Okay, uh, after this deployment, I will see each and every one. Okay, just give me some time. Yeah. Let me, guys, we'll see like uh, angular application docker uh, angular application heroku that's reason i choose actually uh, this one uh, this firebase let me go and see how to deploy the application into heroku they're saying something here and we created that's fine that's fine Okay, they are saying that we have to create a server.js file. Let's go to here and create a file called server.js. Okay, this is the express file actually because we have to run the express server. Express file. You can copy this code, okay? Then they are saying Just a second guys, let me change this one Okay, let's see 
we have changed this file let me see that how it's going to work let will do that in engine they are saying that we have to do hero login first go to the command prompt and do the hero login Now, do the Heroku login. We will follow the instruction. What they are saying, we are doing the Heroku login. We are going to this path, do the Heroku login. And uh, let's see. This will authorize my application. Now it's there. Right? Now, what they are saying now? They are saying Heroku git remote your comments we have to Let's see what happening. Okay. Okay, guys. Now let me go. Setting this is our app. Let's see what the issue here. Because this is first time for me. Let me do things.
Oke. रंजन इधर एरर दिखा रहा है एनपीएन कैश कैशे में कहाँ पे फिर ऊपर राजा चल एक मिनट चलो उधर ही जहाँ पे आप इंस्टॉलेशन चलाएँ ये देखो एनपीएम कॉन्फ़िग लॉग लेवल एरर दैट्स व्हाट व्हाट हैपनिंग आई पर सी I have to check this one first. Okay, now I can see. Oh, <laughs> the logo is coming. Okay, let me add. Hello. Okay, that is the error. That is fine. Well, guys, let me tell you what is done, what happened. I'll tell you all these things because this is for me new. Okay, that's fine. Okay, guys, understand. When you are running the Angular application, right? When you are running the Angular application, you know that this application is running where? This application is running on the Node.js server. This is going to run the Node.js server. Guys, when you run this, when you're going to fire npm start, right? npm start, what happening? We have to first understand this thing. You know that npm start means we are running the Node command, right? In Node command, what happening? Is is creating a Node server, and top of that server, it's running the application, right? It's running our Node.js application. The same way. When we are going to run this application on Heroku, then what will going to happen? We have to create a our own server. Then only, in top of that, we are going to run our Angular application. Due to that, what they are saying, because our application running our local, but in the uh, in the Heroku, what we are going to do? We have to first create a server.js. First, understand what is a server.js, guys. This is the Node.js code. In server.js, they are going to create a virtual server for us. And in this virtual server, what they are going to do? They are going to create a dist folder. Inside dist folder, they are going to serve the files to us. Got it? Means what I am saying here? First, we have to create a Node.js application. In this Node.js application, we are going to run. Inside that, we are going to run the Angular application. Same thing is happening when you are going to type npm start because npm start is going to create a Node.js application or a Node.js server. In top of that, we are going to run our application. Okay, that's why then they are saying that we have to create that way. Now you can see that we are something is not working. Not working means we have did some code changes. Now you can see that we can able to see the code here. Where is gone? See that now it's going to display the data. Right, this is the way you can able to install the Heroku into your machine. But for Heroku, 
you can you have to know that you must have to first create a server inside the server you have to then do the build inside the build it's going to create the application okay now i have changed lot of thing here in the uh, our package json let me revert this one this will be the ng surf and i'll go and add this one into our redmi file here okay now let me okay guys okay guys you able to see my screen now all of you okay now yes the last part we have left that is called test case now let's go and focus on that because we have a little bit time we're going to discuss on that guys understand what is your test case i know that if you people from different different programming background that you know that you are writing test case someone writing a unit testing someone writing in different different type of testing right now now we have to do that how to do the unit test case in our application first understand a unit test case case and for unit test case what is the availability what how we are going to run the unit test case for our angular application guys as i told earlier if i go to this our when i discuss this thing i explained about this karma right guys karma is a test case runner okay yeah test case runner means based on this test case we are going to run the application but the framework is jasmine understand what is karma jasmine guys same way i can tell that np node is a framework in top of that we are running angular application guys same much karma is a test case framework I mean test case runner means platform top of that we are going to write the jasmine framework code I mean jasmine is the language using that we are using using that we are going to write the angular application run test case that you will ask me question do i need to run you have to run the in extra on this jasmine and karma any other language no these all are the javascript language same language but there is some predefined code is there which you must have to know how to run the application before going into that one let's run the angular let's go to run and the angular application for that let me try ng test ng test is the test case code which is used to run the test case let's see okay now see this one now it's going to run the test case for us you can see lot of test case is getting failed that is doesn't matter but this is the test case how this will looks like now let's go and understand what they are saying what they are have error after you run ng test you can see that is saying that we have four failed four success means in between that we have four test case success four is failed who are the failed then we'll go and display the cross mark here okay we'll go to cross mark here okay the cost mark here now in this case we'll see what the error is saying that should be create cannot read property of undefined read item whatever they are saying if you mouse over it going to see that what is the component it's saying the error okay now before going that let's understand how the test case would be looks like okay now let's go to our src folder src folder will go to the, our app folder uh, we will go to the app component .ts. this is our component guys for this component they have a test case you know that for test case we have a file called spec file dot spec dot ts same ts file but before that they are applying the spec let us click on spec now understand what they are writing here this is very complicated one we are not going to understand this one let us go to the small one first understand this part now let us go to this part this one guys understand this part this is a to do component right in this to do component they are saying that what is the this they are saying guys describe first understand what is describe describe means you are writing one test case understand describe means you are writing one test
test case for describe your it in to do to do component uh, test case in this the test case create a group of specs means you are writing a um, test case for a specific component now it it means it's going to define one 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 test case okay it's going to define a one 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 test case this is a test case group describe means you are describing one test case group inside the test case group you are going to define one 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 test case okay and in this test case you know that how the test case is written it should be truthy it should be falsy it should be all assets equal to true false all this are getting written forget about this one let's go and focus upon before each before each what they are written here guys they are saying let's component equal to do component they are getting the to do component instance this is a to do component this is the to do component instance then they are saying that let me go to their stress case they are saying that component fixture first understand what is the use of fixture the fixture is a, a is a class which is going to which is going to use for the test case debugging okay it's a fixture using this fixture we can get all the information about the component component is there but are saying that fixture is used to do the all the changes in the component just understand this part we are going to understand the other thing later you understand all these things now before each they're saying run some shared setup before each spec of describe which is the called guys this is called the init function means when we are going to call the component suppose you want to initialize a variable you want to initialize a class you want to initialize something then all these things you are going to do in before each you can see that before each they are doing two parts one asynchronous one synchronous let's forget about this asynchronous because it's asynchronous let's focus on the synchronous one before each means suppose before running all this test case if you want to do any kind of setup any kind of initialization any kind of that memory allocation then you have to use the before each okay got it now in before each i am getting a test bed i don't understand what is the test bed is saying test bed means mouse over test bed is a primary api for writing unit test for angular application on the library means test bed is going to create because i understand this is not going to create anything this is going to create everything virtually due to that it's saying that fixture is going to create a bed for you bed for means it's going to create a component for you it's going to be component bed in top of this component bed you are going to write a test case right means fixture is used to get the component test case and use a test bed we're getting the instance of this one now we are getting the component instance and fixture or detect changes means it's going to active the component this is the primary they are just initializing the instance of a component then we are going to use the it okay it you know that it's used for the writing the test case for the each and every test case now you have to write that you have to give the test case name you have to give the text test case name and second parameter is the you have to specify that test case is truthy or falsy okay now let's understand what is truthy or falsy guys you know that test case is just right you have to, you have to confirm that whatever you are designing that should be that that should be there or not just an example i am going to explain when i am going to run this application by default this item should be initialized as a zero means by default the item should be contain the zero item means there is contain no item if contain more than one item then i say that it's a falsy means i am expecting that this item always be initialized with a blank item then how will check that for that reason i'll go to test case i'll write it here suppose same thing write it here should be empty items example now component dot say the items dot length equal to to equal zero 
understand i am saying that when i want i am expecting the component item length is equal to 0 if i go and run this test case again you will see that it's going to say that false or true you see that it's saying that it's which one is getting false let's see this one to do edit to add okay. they are saying something to do should create it's not creating now due to this component is not truthy truthy means is it's getting failed you can see that it's getting failed should create should create its fails let me good let me remove this one let me run this one let's see anything is happening Okay, let's run this application. After that, we'll close this session. Let's run this one. I tell you, this is the way we'll go and write a test case. Okay. This is happening error. So we create. Okay, guys, there are a lot of test case issue is happening there. If you're going to fix it, let it take more, much more time. But you just understand, this is the way you will go and write a test case for each and every component. Means, suppose you have another variable here, you want to check that edit item by default null. Then you can add a test case called it should be is null. Then check that it's equal to null. It's contain lot of comparison. It's a truthy, falsy, equal to, not equal to lot of things happening here this is the way you can go and run your test case okay because test case is a vast chapter because you have to learn each and everything for test case what is the use of this um this all these things you have to learn but this is not getting time to learn all these things but you have to know know that this is the way we can go and write the test case the application and to run the test case we have to execute the application this is the case who are the cross is failed who are the green it's our success Right. Any questions, guys? Uh, Ranjan, ek bari describe wala fir se batayenge ab isme. Hujan, Hujan. Eh, test case isme apne describe bataya tha. Okay. Let me describe. The describe is used to. Let me repeat it again. Describe is used to describe a test case group. Means this te this test case is for to do component. Same way, if you go to any other component also, let me go to add component also. If you let go to the specs file it's going to do add component means i'm defining a test case for each and every component describing that create a group of specs means it's a group of test case this is the parent group inside this group we are going to create the n number of subgroup this is the one test case this is the one test case i'm going to add n number of test case okay these are the things we have to add as a different 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 different, different test case for that and each and every test case that is a concept called truthy, falsy, all this kind of stuff is there. We are going to use that one to run the unit test case for the application. Okay. And let's think what is saying. Okay. Suraj is saying, can you roughly tell sketch how to make e-commerce website using Angular and important things that are required in that? Okay. We'll discuss this part. Anyone any questions? So when you see here, it's loading here, when I type something like that, and when I enter, task name already exists, not coming here, not displaying yeah, anything. Yeah, that, 
yeah yeah do one thing uh, do one thing so don't worry uh, don't worry about this thing because we have messed up something because give me some time like i am going to fix this issue and i'm going to ah, commit the code okay. i'm going to commit this code into the git again if you got and pull it right okay i'm going to inform okay. the group that this is fi- this is got fixed and it will go and download the pull the latest code and run it it's going to work okay, okay. sure sure thanks okay yeah. thanks yeah.